I'm Rizlar. I'm Frosty. As nobody's really engaged quite yet. Yep, oh, there we have a bit of- Oh, is that a triple stun for the Mystic? And welcome back to the Value Pack. And welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Value Pack. Uh, I don't think we got anything to, like, announce or anything today, but we have a, uh, a very special guest. Guest? I can't speak English, it's hard. A guest. Uh, it is Ross Dame. Thank you, Ross Dame, for joining us today, my guy. But... Yo, what's up? Hello. Before we get into that, we'd like to thank our patrons. Oh, fuck me. God damn it. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold. Hold. Hold that thought. Yep. You're right. You're Cut right. Today. <laughs> this this was Take all two. planned. Good thing this our, was all planned. Good thing our guest is good at editing. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is all planned. <laughs> this, this is, is what we planned. actually called him on for. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Here we go. All right. So thank you to our lovely patrons, uh, Callahad, Hawaiian, Auscultation, Minaria, Jeremy Johnson, Mayo Knight, Talisex Septum. Infrax, Sinvala, Icarian, Justicar, I has issues, and of course the infamous uh, my PP itches as well. I don't know why he's not popping up, but Lord Carrot as well. So thank you to all of you guys for supporting us on Patreon. Uh, we appreciate your support. Sorry, I am such a fucking forgetful little bitch. All right, now let me introduce our guest. <laughs> he is a uh, he's an insane Kuno over in uh, the wonderful lands of EU. Uh, he has even more insane edits. Uh, Ross Stain, thank you for joining us, my guy, for the second time. <laughs> Hello. And for the Thanks fourth, for introducing me. For the fourth time, it's pronounced Rose Stain. I don't uh, listen. I'm an American. I'm gonna call him ready. what I want to call him. It matters so much, and and Rose Stain just his feelings are hurt every time you pronounce it wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm Rose... sure he understands. I, I'm just a I'm just an ignorant American, right? I mean, come on. You're right. All right, Rostam, where are you from? How long have you been playing BDO? What class do you play? And uh, just tell everyone a little bit about yourself, if you could, it would be awesome. Oh well, um, I'm Polish, so my accent can be a bit cringe. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been playing BDO since uh, December 2017, and I didn't really have any breaks, I believe. Although I'm a huge slacker, so I'm under geared as always. I've been playing Kuno since release, or like since I started playing. Um, yeah, well, Succession since it was released. And I really just do PvP in this game and like record all the stuff I want to and then edit it into cool videos because I like really like to edit stuff and probably wish to uh, go that direction later. Like, uh, you know, editing and stuff. So, do you you edit everything? All of your videos are, are edited 100% by you? Yeah, of course. Have you gone? I mean, yeah. I think I did some pull-ups. No. Mm -hmm. no, actually, no. I only edited both for other people. So, like, they sent me the clips and I was editing them. Oh, and how much does that cost? I'm looking for a... I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, how are you like? Uh, did you go to school for editing? Because your editing is kind of insane. No, I did. It was everything self learned from oh. YouTube tutorials mostly. Uh, did you start editing with BDO? What editing? Or? What software do you use? Out of curiosity. Uh, mostly like for most of my stuff, it's just Sony Vegas and some plugins I use. And then if oh, I want yeah. to go, do like some more advanced stuff, I use uh, After Effects and then like Photoshop for like some graphics and shit. Nice, nice. Yeah, nice. my uh, my editing is fairly limited to like whatever I can take off my uh, my recording file and plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, she's like, I know how to cut things on the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can transition and. That's about where we're at. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I, I can't make fun of you. That's about as much as I do as well, in all honesty. <laughs> my my editing is limited to re-recording from scratch because it didn't come out the way I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I mean, that works too well. 
Were you doing any editing before BDO, or is it BDO that kind of got you into it? Uh, well, yeah, I started by playing League, and I started making uh, montages and videos and like edits from the League. But since it's so hard to like start a new channel on just on League, since there's like so many people on playing League and doing videos, it wasn't really any way to like you know start off. So well, then uh, since my videos like had like each max like 200 views or something i pretty much just stopped doing them and then i got into video and yeah i really love the pvp so i decided to try to like do something with that okay. your editing kind of reminds me did you ever watch a league of legends uh youtube channel called peace pigeon yeah i did I, I know your editing kind of reminds me of his actually he was like doing meme stuff a lot there right? like those uh, like, yeah uh, like back in the day yeah, but it's like cinematic stuff. I really liked that one. Like, I was watching a lot of YouTubers and like trying to learn from them. What uh, what rank are you in league? Uh, right now I am plat two, plat one, plat two. I think. Oh, yeah, okay. plat two somewhere. All right, just making sure the best league player in this Discord. Uh, so <laughs> Kuno, um, Nayashi's Nayashi's like gold two now, dude. He's catching, he's catching up. Uh, gold four, about to be gold three. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm only two months in, so dude, Sam, Sammy got Sammy got Grandmaster last night. Did he really? Yeah. Just shows you. I'm gonna have to one v one Sammy and uh, Nunu and Will up a little bust. I'm gonna one v one Sammy. 1v1 Sammy. Okay. Dude, that champion is absolutely broken. He'll let you, you can't 1v1 him on League until you 1v1 his Mewa. He wants you to fight his Mewa. Dude, I already 1v1 his Mewa. He no. deleted it, I thought. No, no, no. His Mewa, he's been training. <laughs> he's been training to fight your suck Mewa for years. He's right. I'm sure I believe it. <laughs> he was um, there with the design team. So, <laughs> when you first started playing, uh, Rostam, why why'd you choose Kuno? Why did, why did uh, you Kuno? don't first off I wanted to play a female character because of obvious reasons yes no um, I don't know then, what are those obvious reasons I, I mean it's not really important okay <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I didn't really like to like play a 40 m character so like I re I usually play characters that nobody else does so like you no, know, when I clapped him, then they're like, "What the fuck is going on?" And they have no idea. <laughs> yeah. uh, so well, I was like choosing between Lan and Kuno, but then like Lan just felt so slow, so I picked Kuno, and it wasn't a bad uh, a bad choice uh, in the end. Even though Kuno was back then like the least played class ever, I was so right. bad. So when um you were, I imagine you were playing full time when the CC changes happened, or no? Uh, well, I was playing back then, but I don't really remember that much about it. Oh, okay, okay. I, I think I, I started, like, somewhere somewhere soon be, be, uh, before that happened, so... Right, okay. Um, so, when Succession came out, you immediately went to Succession, and you've been playing Succession ever since, so... Uh, right? Yes. Basically, right before the Succession hit, I was about to quit the game. Because, uh, like, soon before that, the awakened spin buffs happened, right? So, like, the spin was literally one-tapping people. Yeah. And I didn't really enjoy that, because, like, your, basically your gameplay only was, like, legit stealthing and stomp spinning people. And that was all you had to do as Kuno. So, at that point, a lot of people just started rerolling to Kuno massively. And I didn't really like it again. So, yeah, I... I got kind of bored of playing that way, and I was about to quit. But then, like they announced uh, successions, so I decided to stay there and check it out when it releases. And yeah, I was already like checking it out first day when it uh, launched on the uh, global app. So I I really liked that, like the fast paced uh, paced uh, combat and stuff. Right, like a lot of mobility. So not not too long after suck came out i want to say like maybe six weeks or two months they they had a couple nerfs to like flash slash and dance macabre i believe is in that patch and shadow clones they also nerfed spin spree 
So now that Spin's free, no longer one taps people and barely does any damage. <laughs> do you uh, do you ever feel tempted to go back, or or why do you play suck no. now? Okay, I why not? tried to. I, I tested succession. I mean, awaken damage a few times after like some nerfs and buffs and stuff. Just kind of because I was just curious how how much of a difference it is, and like uh, right now, even though damage isn't that much lower. Uh, basically, people just got so much gear right now because of the bartering and stuff, and I didn't really get into that much. Uh, so I'm under geared, and I really need the damage to actually kill people. So I, yeah, for that one reason, really, I I stayed success, uh, succession, and it's just much like much more fluid, and uh, I guess uh, much more room for like you know, experimenting and like doing different combos and the rune system. That's also really fun. You can play around that as well. Because, like, literally, Awaken Kuno is just a uh, half moon into uh, Sea Swap, Lingering, into Ghost Step, into another half moon. And that's basically all you do until you fucking stomp and spin people. That's just uh, legit <laughs> the gameplay. That's sound, fairly accurate. You sound really excited by it. Yes. Um, so, I don't know. At, at least for me, a, a lot of people, like, I don't know. Maybe in, a lot of non Kuno players like consider Kuno like at least semi. Maybe a little bit less so today than like a month or two ago, but consider Kuno kind of flavor of the month. Suck Kuno. How do you feel? Have you heard that? And how do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, I preposterous mean, claim. Uh, I feel like uh, Succession Kuno, since it has such a low uh, like skill floor, so it's like easy to play and do well. But like hard to master, I guess, because like the movement is much more uh, complex than uh, than in Awaken. It's just really easy to get into, and you like literally half of the player base, if not more, doesn't have clue about the Kuno dash. So they get CC'd by Tendon Cutter, right? They just go, "Oh my god, this is so broken!" Hello, and like people just start complaining. And I mean, instead of trying to learn how to play against the class, they just go and I go complain. And yeah, I think like, that's uh, just why people are running because like a lot of people don't know how to play against. It. It's basically the same situation as in with Sork, like back in the day. Like everyone was legit molding about Sork, right? Yeah. And back then, I legit took the time. I asked a few friends from Guild, the Sorks, that would like explain me the stuff, what to do, and how to play against it. And legit got so much easier. I wasn't like I I uh, I actually enjoyed fighting Sorks. So yeah. if, if someone says, though, like someone, because I've heard this argument too, because I, I always say that, like, well, you just got to learn, like, you got to learn, especially, specifically tendon cutter, right? Because, like, I feel like when, I, when I'm grinding and every time someone comes up and it's, like, dual for spot, it's literally two tendon cutters and I won the spot yeah. because yeah, they don't exactly. know how to defend. But people tell me, like, well, why is it fair that I have to learn that matchup, but not the others. Like, that's what makes it too strong. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, the um, fact that you'd have to learn that I'm matchup, but other classes you don't really have to spend time to learn. Kind so. of autistic argument, I guess. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Dude. Like, if you want to be successful in PvP, of course you're going to learn, like, your matchups. Like, how are you supposed to beat other classes if you have no clue what they do? Right. And then, uh, what was I supposed to say? Um, Okay, I actually forgot. Just Sorry, no, no, actually, you were going to add something? No, right when he was saying something, something happened in game. That just, oh, typical BDO <laughs> thing where my screen he, he stopped, stopped dude, for a second. A Zerker just a Zerker came in from the lane, grabbing dude. A <laughs> Zerker keeps grabbing him out of chase. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh -oh. it, it's crazy. Okay. Probably, probably exactly what happened. It's just my BDO froze up completely and then reloaded. You know, the typical thing, you know. All right. Great game. Everyone should play it. Um, so Tendon Cutter, when it first came out, you could cancel it at any and, time. Yeah, yeah. I've also, like you've actually watched uh, um, the the video I posted lately at uh, the the duels against uh, Toy. So mm -hmm. like legit in the thirty minute video, like eighty duels plus, he got hit by Tendon twice. So like, how is that broken? Like, just gotta learn the class and actually dodge it. So. Right. The skill literally casts for like 1.5 seconds or something. So you just have to click one button. Use any SA or iframe. 
So what do you say? So when I was talking to Choice about this, Choice plays Zerker in NA, he, one of his points was that some classes like Zerker, for example, don't have on demand like super armor that they can just use instantly. So Tenon Cutter is a lot more dangerous Wait, what? for them. Uh, this is one yes, of the... Uh, actually, Zerker is one of the easiest uh, matchups, I'd say. As long as you're like dodging the grab. Right. What I mean, were you gonna yeah, say? What Nash, can I say? I guess. So, well, I don't understand what he means by he doesn't have on-demand super armors. Like if so, if you see like you can't just like stop whatever you're doing if you already started something and use an SA on on some classes like Zerker for oh, example. Oh, you mean where, cancel into one? Yeah, or just like like oh, there's a there's ten and cutter like I, so they have to use lava piercer to be aggressive or escape, right? So, like, they're not going to be able to just use Lava Piercer exclusively on Tenon Cutter, stuff like that. Well, I mean, what about Devastation? I mean, I... I oh, it's a slow area effect. It's only a super armor on Tenon Cutter, therefore they get slowed and everything, and then you can just Right, but then can you just... Them? Yeah, exactly. You could just grab them out of it. Right. Also, there's like, a, there's, like, a 0.75 second delay before the first hit even goes, so... Well, it's not like they're... Canceling out a tendon cutter right away. You know, that's, that's still faster than the uh, succession uh, tendon cutter float, right? Because it has to like, do all the animation and then you hit the float. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, go on. Oh, and, and so I guess just, just isolate in your opinion. I mean, you already kind of said, but in your opinion, do you think tendon cutter needs to be nerfed in any way or do you think it's fine? Uh, well, I'm not really sure. Like the. Flow is kind of broken. I agree to that. But then you have the 1.5 sec wind up. And if you don't really have gear, you're just gonna die in tendon. So like even using it against some classes is just risky. So if people actually know how to play against Kuno, yeah, they will just punish you for that. So right. it's really only good against people who have no idea or no gear. Yeah, I, I it doesn't do that much, that much damage either. So. I don't really know if it should be nerfed or not. Yeah. Um, Maybe what... they should like extend the animation a little bit so people have more time to react and then it just gets worse. So I don't know. It's up to them, I guess. Um, what about Kuno, Kuno damage? Um, some people complain Kuno does too much damage compared to other classes. How, how do you feel it's with Kuno's disgusting. damages? I mean, succession damage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, succession yeah. damage. Yeah, it's kind of disgusting. But then again, there's like a DK, which is even more disgusting. And yeah, they still complain about Kuno, so I don't know. Succession Ranger also does more damage. Succession Wizard also does more damage. And like the fact about Kuno is that, okay, we deal a lot of damage, right? But legit everything uh, besides Flash Flash and Tendon Cutter is unprotected and close range. Right. So like... It has its downsides, right? It does a lot of damage, but it's, everything is legit unprotected. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Like, there's many other classes out there that have ridiculous like, damage with a lot in more the protections. Air, like, a Will of Wrath, so, like, the most damaging skill on Kuno is legit uh, uh, Serpent Ascension from Ninja. Like, I don't believe people were actually complaining about Serpent's damage. Because it's unprotected and quite slow. I was, dude, on trial characters back before, <laughs> back, okay. back in the day, dude. It was like, I remember before, um, before Spin Spree got buffed, I just remember thinking like Kuno had to like put in so much work on a trial. This is back when, um, trials were like 254 or something, um, before like more yeah. of the journals got put in. But I remember just like a friend would stomp and serpent me and I'd be like, I'd die. And then like on Kuno, yeah. did, like, and exactly that's why damage. Kuno like the least played class in the game it was just, was just bad like the kit was bad and it dealt no damage yeah it is interesting how things change though because now serpent feels not even that strong i mean it is really strong especially if they have accuracy accessory but without it i don't know like some ninjas are run into yeah i don't know what what's your uh what's your what's your gear score at roast Roast like what's your APDP uh, now? right now oh my god bro <laughs> Sorry to uh, put you on the spot. Kind of a shame. Um, 283 AP and 325 DP. Zero 09 on my distortions. Let's go. Oh, fuck. Are you crowning? I was 
the first five attempts and then I just like went ham on it. I didn't even care anymore. And That's I didn't the fail. Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the BDO way. Oh my god. Wait, how are yours doing now? Actually, I know you were going for just a... Uh, I'm basically just funneling all my funds into Tet distortion attempts. How many have you gotten? Same How many here. attempts? Uh, I've done two attempts, and uh, we we haven't had happy results yet. Has it downgraded? Are you croning? Um. Well, the first two I didn't have the crons. Now I have crons, so I'm trying to get a, another uh, try so that I can go for a Ted attempt and cron it. Yeah. So that is the current goal. I think it's actually not a bad idea to buy duos and cron them as well. Yeah, yeah, it's not that yeah. much constant, and the price is legit like six bill to two bill. So, it's a lot of money. Chaos says there's the no point. So sorry. No, Chaos says there's no point in crowning because a forty percent chance to downgrade. I don't know if that chance is right, but the the reason why it's worth it. I think distortion. it's forty. I think it's thirty, thirty, thirty. Yeah, I think it's thirty as well. But Quartet. the thing is, is that it's actually the amount of crowns it takes is still cheaper than buying a duo from scratch. That's why it's yeah. worth yeah. it. So even if it downgrades, you still it's... get value. Like Sammy's saying right now, even if it downgrades, you still only lose 1.5 bill instead of the entire thing. Always cron. Right. I mean, that's not entirely accurate. You lose 1.5 bill in terms of the crons, but you also lose the value of that try into a duo now. So that's like 2 bill or so. Yeah, but then you lose like 5 bill, right? Not fucking 6. Yeah, there that's there still. is that difference. <laughs> and there's always a chance that it goes back up again, right? So. Yep, exactly. So you could save yourself a lot of potential money. All right. Um, okay, question about block jump. Is block jump overpowered in your opinion? Real same. Says no. Because block jump, I feel like in North America, is complained about a lot. Like, people hate block <laughs> jump. I think Re Reslar I mean, definitely is one that also um, is not a huge fan of block jump. Um, I don't really think it's this. overpowered necessarily. I Quite just find it seasoned. fucking annoying. Yeah, I mean, I used to myself complain about people who just like would just block jump grab every eighteen seconds, which was quite annoying. Or even more when the cooldown was like ten seconds or so. <laughs> but good days. I don't know. There's still like so much stuff, uh, so much room for like punishment and block jump. Like you can just easily counter it. I don't know. Ever since yeah, playing a little bit of Succession Kuno and watching uh, more Frosty do like PvP on it, I, I the main thing that I agree with him about is that fucking little teleport on the, the forward C. That shit is so fucking annoying. Remove that shit immediately, bro. Because it's like, <laughs> you think you're out of fucking range of it, and then it's just like, whoop, just teleports to you. like a fu It's literally block jump tagged onto the end of the goddamn ability. I'm so fucking sick of it. <laughs> yeah, Rose... Rose, my my thing with dance was when they had that patch that removed the lingering SA, I wish instead that patch just removed the lock on and kept the lingering SA. Yeah, it would be actually much better. I agree. Yeah, because then that way it would be less annoying for people and it would, because we're so limited on, on super armor. So it would have been like, I don't know, nice. Because it, it added a little bit of outplay stuff. That was kind of cool. I missed that linger, dude. And there is like a uh, small delay after using that that you cannot grab instantly out of it. So it's yeah. still like not a uh, hundred percent grab. You can still react to that. Most but most block again, jumps are. Or... It's kind of useless. Yeah, I mean, most block jumps have, haven't been too much of an issue. It is an annoying skill for sure, but. It all depends on how that particular player utilizes it. I think it. it's mostly like overpowered if you look at the, like what you, how you can literally disengage from a entire blob of people and you yeah. just get away with that. That's actually broken. The, the defensive but, uh, aspects are definitely yeah, more yeah. powerful than the offensive. Like you just bind the uh, WW evasion, right? And you just can like literally dash over a, a guy that's farthest from you and you just get away so easily from like a blob fight. It's actually broken. Yeah. Um, what do you think they need to do to Awakening to make... Because uh, I would say in NA, there's like a few people that play Awakening, but I feel like they're in denial. Actually, I know they're in denial because they just missed the play style. But it's like... 
I don't know. It's objectively worse in every way. It's less damage, less movement. Yeah, yeah. It's just worse. So what do you think they have to do to Awakening to make players that like Succession um, play Awakening oh again? First off, I would give some protection to uh, Lunar Dash. Okay. Like, it's just a joke how bad the skill is compared to Ninja Ninja Step. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Plus, I don't know. Yeah. Plus it CCs you if you hit a target. Yeah, it's legit a suicide move if you hit a target. And then I think each case should probably add a bit of damage, a bit of scaling on skills that uh, like don't do that much. So like uh, Will of Wrath, I guess Lunar uh, Lunatic Disc, and then I don't know, like a bunch of others. So like this, so the class isn't like uh, two skills, you know. Right. Which is way too boring, I believe. Wait, I don't know. And also, Chain Crash and, and uh, Sack Soul Mount Spree. It's, it's those skills just need a rework, a complete rework. It's, those are just garbage. Yeah, I kind of I wish so much that Chain Crash, like the duration of it, was actually longer and you placed it down kind of like Mystic's uh, Dragon Pit. Like a trap. Yeah. Right. And it just sat there doing it for like two, two and a half seconds. Or yeah, I, mean, but I, I, I liked the uh, way before. Like it was frontal guard, I believe, or super. No, you guys think That's Gertrude's? It. We could use it from south to engage on people. What, Nasha? Oh, sorry, I'm reading something from chat. <laughs> um, yeah, the old man, the old chain crash was so cool. I, I actually feel like. I don't know, Rezlar, I feel like you you're you probably would be in agreement with me on this. I am kind of over the if it's awakening, it can't have protected CC rule when like successions have it anyway. Like maybe the whole kit doesn't need it, but I don't get why every class can't have like a singular protected CC in their awakening kit. Because it makes the awakening kit feel so un like not powerful compared to succession. I don't know. Um I I would I agree, but I would offer another alternative instead. I think I would rather just see protected CCs kind of go in general. Honestly, I don't. I really don't like protected CCs. I think they're they're kind of eh. Maybe you give like one or two max to every class, like. But I really am not a, a huge fan of protected CCs, and I say that as an archer. Right, I spam fucking meteor every five seconds, so I don't know. That's just my opinion, though. It's probably an unpopular one, but that's just honestly how I feel about it. But if we can't do that, then yeah, I, I agree. I think the whole awakenings can't have protected CCs is a bit of a relic of the past when they were going to balance the game in one particular way and then just gave up halfway, essentially. And then for whatever reason, they just decided to keep it. Because originally, yeah. remember, they were going to remove protected CCs in general. They were like, we're going to remove it from Awakenings, and then we're going to remove it from Pre-Awakenings. And then they just never did Pre-Awakenings. I, um... With that all having been said, I'll, I'll take that Chain Crash, Super Armor, Stun back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that shit was so much fun, man. That was like one of the, re that was like one of the main staples of why you were ex people were excited to level up Akuno. It's like you couldn't wait to get to 58 and unlock Chain Crash. Because it was like the, the skill animation is super cool and it was like, it was fast. It had a long, like, super armor. I don't know. I miss that skill, dude. That skill is just so sad now. Um, which, uh, what class in your opinion? Uh, Rostami is is too, or Rostami is too strong. Like, which classes are kind of actually overpowered in your opinion? Uh, do I really have to say this? Isn't this obvious? Oh, oh yes, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, do. you do. <laughs> you have no choice. We all know it's uh, oh, no. Maywa. <laughs> oh yes. Oh my god. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Well, wizards obviously like. I don't even understand how the thing made it to the game. Like, it's just a joke, bro. Right, so what what about it? Hey, did, I, did I send you the clip actually? No. Oh, it's... I did the wizard clip. I did send you the clip. Uh, oh, which... <laughs> I don't remember. So which much counter play, bro. <laughs> Scroll up a bit in our DM. The last clip, yeah. 
Yeah, I just feel like they have too much protective damage, and yeah, you, they can literally just linger stuff all over, and they do so much damage, and it's also mostly from range, and obviously double TP, like two seconds downtime, it's just uh, no no dude. Oh yeah, this. You mean where the the wizard breaks breaks his block with meteor yeah. from far away, and then when you gap close, just they just died of voltaic, not even CC. Yeah, yeah I was lingering. Frigid. I was literally lingering, and I like, just got one tapped by a frigid fog or something, and that was like <laughs> two seven two seventy AP. Oh, a fucking God. parrying dagger, dude. Oh, wait, does he use a parrying dagger? That is insane. Yes. Yeah. Re recently. I don't know. There's, it, it's been it's been insane. Like every GVG starts off like kind of fun, and then five or six Wizwitch show up, and then all the fun goes away. That's Just literally saying. that's literally why I have it. Like I had to stop RBFing because it was like, yeah, this RBF's uh, pretty good. It's pretty even, and they have two suck Wizzes. Now we just lose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it tastes like that. Uh, well, like what legit you... every guild is fifty wizards and some other classes. It's just so sad. If you could change something on Suck Wizard to bring it back down to earth, what what would you change? Delete it. Uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> well, less damage. I'm like one or two seconds more on the teleport, and maybe like remove at least one of the other uh, their like CC protected CCs, and like. This fucking mana shit, bro. It's so disgusting. Like, even if they misplay and you're about to grab them, oh no, I have a resistance. Go. Like, what are you supposed to do about that? It's RNG game. And 15, is it 15 or 15 or 20 percent? And also makes them literally the tankiest class in the game with the <laughs> mana shield up. Yeah, that 20 percent flat DR actually helps quite a bit. Let me let me offer you guys let me offer you guys a button. If you press if you press the button, suck whiz gets deleted from the game. But let me guess a grab. Also, if you press the button, in actuality all successions just get deleted from the game. You, you press that button? No. Oh, no. Un uninstall button. No. <laughs> uninstall button. Dude, the thing is too, is and a lot of wizards tell me I, I swear to god this actually is a thing that they tell me whenever I bring up the mana shield resist and the DR, like just how insane it is. They all tell me, like, well, we don't really use it. And it's 100% time. Well, they say we don't really oh. use it that much. It's actually not that good because it drains our mana. And it's just like, <laughs> okay. oh my god, dude, that shit tilts me so much whenever I hear that. <laughs> I don't know. The best argument about wizards being balanced is uh, that because they were uh, like garbage in one v ones for over two years, then they, they deserve that right now. <laughs> That's the best yeah. argument I got. <gasps> Oh, it's the worst. That, that is by far my favorite. I've heard that too, though. I, hate <laughs> shit. I, I love that. That the past, it's like, well, your, your previous plights are why you deserve to just be overpowered for a while. Like, so no. fucking funny. As, yeah. As if it has anything to do with it. And then we also have the 200% meteor on top of it. Uh, yes, very balanced kill again. Huge AoE, uh, protected CC, and also huge damage. Yeah. I don't know, lately I, I'm starting to miss that people people probably don't remember, but before Absolutes came out, I missed that whatever it was, one minute, thirty second or two minute cooldown on Meteor, dude. Remember before um Absolutes it didn't used to be thirty second cooldown. Oh yeah. uh, dude. Dude, and the other thing that's starting to tilt me lately is uh, a lot of wizards tell me that the beginning of Meteor isn't protected, and then they say, quote, it's only Frontal Guard. And I, I don't know in what world that Frontal Guard is no longer protection for people, but um, that's protection. Yeah. And I mean, it's also, also only on cast? It, it's also able to be used from five miles away, right? Which, as much as people don't want to admit like range is another form of protection. I mean, yeah. it's not like a super armor or frontal guard, but it is a form of protection. Trust me, I'm an archer. <laughs> I know yeah. these things. Do you know how safe I am when I'm hitting people from out of render range? I'm very safe. Yeah. Um. So, Rustami, what what or Rustami, what what matchups do you 
like on your Kuno in 1v1 and which ones uh, are do you feel like are weaker for Kuno and for you specifically? I mean, by liking, you mean like uh, easy or... Yeah, uh, like both. Like, what's like the easiest and then which ones do you enjoy the most and then which ones are the most difficult? Mm, most difficult would be probably a good awaken DK, I would say, and uh, maybe succession them. Uh -huh. uh, Awaken. Tamer is kind of annoying because like you cannot really catch them unless they misplay. You have to be careful around the uh, Tamer trap. Yeah. Well, a huge AP sword can be also difficult to fight. Wizard is actually not that bad in one you one unless you are like heavily outgeared. Because yeah. like you just do tendon and you die in tendon because they just spam their shit. And if you don't even die, you're just gonna get so debuffed that you cannot move. Myself and Chad are all curious because you said Awaken DK and you just don't hear those two words together very often anymore. Okay. So what about Awaken DK oh. is uh, is tough? Or do you know one that's like super good at Awaken DK? you just somebody? Yeah, I mean, I used to fight a lot of my friends from uh, Old Guild. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably people don't know him. Don't know him. Uh, but yeah, he was like, maybe it was just him being Omega good or... I was just garbage, but like the matchup was actually difficult because I, uh, he had like instant iframes, so he could like literally just dodge all my shit if he wanted. Also, the two or three protected CCs, right? Right. They're kind of long, but they're all still like, I could know you just like sometimes just go ham and you, you, you just throw shit at people. And that's really annoying if you get stopped by like a Luna C or something out of fucking protection or something. I don't know. Yeah. I just maybe it's just me, but like I I don't really like fighting DKs. It's just like kind of difficult. Well, for me, if for they me, know yeah. what they're doing, okay. Like, I agree on succession. Stable. Succession DK is fucking hard, man. Like that yeah, matchup I mean, is succession really hard. Does a lot of damage. And the difference between a good one and a bad one is huge too. Because bad succession DK, it's fine, but like when it's someone who knows what they're doing, it's actually so hard. And if they know the Kuno matchup. That shit's intense. Um, so which are some of the ones that you actually like enjoy fighting? Like what are your favorite matchups as far as like it's just fun to fight? Uh well I don't know. I mean probably Sorks because I used to fight them a lot, so I like feel confident in the matchup. Um Zerkers are really easy. Um <laughs> yeah. What other classes are there even? Uh, I, I can't tell. I need to Google my classes. This yeah. I can't tell. How, how do you feel about uh, Kuno vs. Awaken Ninja? Suck Kuno vs. Awaken Ninja. I don't think it's an issue because they're all mostly like lingering their uh, stances, right? So they're frontal. And you just get them so often with a tendon cutter if they don't really pay attention. Yeah. What about uh, What about the mirror matchup? Oh my god, it's a fucking coin flip, bro. Like, I don't ever <laughs> want to play, fight another Kuno. Like, yeah. if you run out of cooldowns, you're just stuck as blocking, and if the guy has stand on up, you're just dead. Unless somehow you just, like, turn around, but then you can't really tell which direction he's gonna appear from. Yeah. I don't know, it's just, like, so weird. Like, the class, I, I agree, fighting succession in Kuno is just so annoying, because the class is so fast, you can't really tell what they're doing. Especially if you have no effects on. It's kind of <laughs> ace. Dude, if you have no effects on, Kuno becomes a god. Yeah, well, I, let me send you a clip. I, I need to find it one second. Yeah, no effect Kuno is, is so nice. No, In Node War, I feel like that's why a lot of my 1v1s go way, way better than in BA when people actually have effects on because they, they can't see anything I'm doing. Well, you heard it here. Even a Kuno doesn't want to fight another Kuno. <laughs> True. Yeah, dude, I, um, oh yeah, I was going to ask you, Stingy in chat's asking this, but in your opinion, what, what's more difficult to fight against, a Succession Ninja or Awaken? Um... I didn't really fight that many uh, Awaken Ninjas directly, so I can't really tell. But yeah, Succession Ninja is hard because they're mostly protected and it's mostly a And they can trade with you, so you, you cannot really fight back against them. 
But yeah, that would definitely like, I think it's like mostly 50 50. Yeah. It's a skill based matchup, I guess. Like knowing their gaps. Yeah, he sent the clip. Yeah, I'm watching it. This clip is funny. It looks like, you know what it looks like? It looks like a speed hacking Zerker. <laughs> it looks like the speed hacking Zerkers in history. <laughs> I've never seen Reslar in history. Yeah, he's did. Yeah, that shit is. Dude, funny. that that fucking desert travel <laughs> shit that you showed me. Oh uh, yeah, still cracks me up. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but I I actually feel like I feel like Awakened Ninja that actually knows the Kuno matchup is so hard to fight. You're good Awakened Ninja. That I mean, I'm pretty it. sure that if Toyo was actually playing for real so like he was like legit I was losing like 10 duels in a row just because he started grabbing me out of every SA mm -hmm. like when he started punishing me for like doing flash lash or even lingering my shit like I was getting wrapped every single time and like if you actually know how to punish Kuno you're just it's it's omega easy unless yeah. you don't have grab unless you don't have a lingering SA uh, that I mean you, also like, Frosty don't... Mm -hmm. Frosty, as well, you're probably fight the Awakened Ninja you're probably fighting is Sammy, I, I would assume. Dude, he, he doesn't really play BDO much anymore, so it's not... I don't really ever get to fight But Sammy. in the past... Yeah. I no. mean, how, what fucking Awakened Ninjas are you fighting now? Do, do they even exist yeah, anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of ninjas are playing Awakening now. Like, uh, I can do this all day. He's almost always on his Awakened Ninja. Um, Block Jump plays Awakened Ninja in PvP. Uh -huh. What? Naturally, a 650 plus gear score ninja playing whatever he wants. Weird. Well, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm basically the same gear score as him. So it's like. And you've also started playing League of Legends and other games recently. Hmm. So that's what 650 gets you, dude. You get to start playing other hmm. games. That's that's the end game here. End game in BDO is you get to 650, 655, hey, and you start playing League of Legends at an iron level. <laughs> that's it. Work like that. it I've been playing the, the game wrong way did all the time. You what? what, was what you I say? wasn't playing the game the right way. <laughs> I assume that's why I'm 600. It feels bad. Yeah, you just gotta go super, super hard, get to 650, and then that's it. You get to start playing. You get to start playing a different game. Okay. Um, Yesterday I tried a game called what was it called? Like Cyber Force, which is a battle royale that looks like a mobile game where a bunch of pop ups uh, get you mid game and the aim is the new one that I was saying released a week ago. Yeah, it's free and it's awful, dude. It's so bad. Don't ever play it. <laughs> I had to uninstall it immediately. I'm like 90% sure it's malware. It's <laughs> um, pretty bad, dude. So. Have you fought uh, uh, an awakened Kuno recently that you felt like was actually like pretty good? How do you feel the matchup is like when Suck fights an awakened Kuno? Uh, I think it's heavily succession favorites. You're just too fast for them to catch up. Yeah. And they don't really have that much. Okay, they have protections, but they cannot touch you if they're they're like protected. So like lingering, and if they start lingering. A C block or or just uh, uh, half moon, you just can grab them easily. Right. Um. In your opinion, how is a succession Kuno in in Node War? And I, I know on your server Siege um, isn't really a thing, but how is it in Siege as well? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I quit Siege like two months ago, but it was just so bad, like. Okay, let's say that like you are supposed to blow fight ever as Kuno because you're just gonna die. Like, there's not much unless you're like Omega Gear. Okay, then you probably you can do that. But then like with my gear, I don't really have DP. I even recently swapped to RBF games, so I'm squishy as fuck. And okay, I can tap people, but I usually just die before I can do that. So. Probably your job is to either just go around and skirmish or look for a single fight, like 1v1s or 1v2s. But then, yeah, often you just get heavily, heavily, like, 
outshade it, I guess, because like you just see any ranged class, and you, you can't either you can't do your skills. You either have to run away or just I don't know, like you're just gonna die. If you see wizard, I I don't even approach wizards anymore. Like this is just pointless. Like I don't even start fighting next to wizards or any rangers classes. It just won't have me, so I don't really enjoy doing sieges anymore. Or like, I mean, not sieges, but uh, no wizards. The siege you can't even kill people with that uh, much HP, and you don't have a protected combo either, so it's um, always risky. Don't know what else I can add. I don't know. It's a nerf. Probably Kuno place should be a, it's a nerf Kuno. A fucking cannon dude or something. Yeah, I mean, I even with gear score, I like. I feel like the if you add a lot of DP, so I'm I'm like full C nine. I feel like the DP makes it so you can one v two now, as long as the wizard's not nearby, and that that's about it. It's funny because like I I die in flash so fast. Like you would literally think there are so many times, and I always like to make the sarcastic, like smart ass remark. I'm like, man, uh, I'll like I'll I'll e buff, I'll will ten and elixir. I have whale pots. I have my fairy potting. I'll uh, and then I dive in, you know, with perfume, giant strap, dive in, use flash slash, and I die instantly. Instantly, and I'm like, man, I wish I had DP. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Because it feels like, it's not like DP actually exists anywhere this like with all the debuffs and succession weird damage, it's like even if you're four hundred you're just gonna tap get up. Like I legit can't uh, forget the one day. We are having a trial and uh Horsey with two eighty one AP succession uh, wizard kutum legit one combo uh, uh awakened ninja with like Full C20 pens and like legit 420 DP with evasion, fucking offhand, and he legit one comboed him with two CCs. I was just like, after that, I was okay, I'm done, bro. Like, I don't even know how this possible, dude. 281 AP. He wasn't even e buffed or anything. Like, how? Yeah. The guy was legit full pen with C20 armor. Yeah, I don't he just know. wasn't the favorite class by uh, PA. Yeah, I'm lucky, dude. Um, yeah. What about PVE? Let's let's uh let's move over to PVE. How, how do you like Succession Kuno for PVE? It's actually not that bad because I kept you have to like uh press a lot of buttons like APM for grind is huge, but it's actually decent, except for the fucking cooldown on explosion. Like 16 seconds is what's uh, literally bottlenecking you on grind. Because like you mainly use the rune combos, right, for each pack. And then you like if you kill one pack, you go to the next pack and your explosion is on cooldown. So you struggle to kill it with 50 other skills because they all do no damage. Yeah. And that's quite triggering. The cooldowns told me, man. They tell me so much. Yeah, like, outside like, of that, it's actually decent, yeah. Yeah, because like kill it does kill quickly, its burst is quick, but then you start to know like all right, so in Histria and Star's End, I feel like Kuno's like really actually pretty good. You just have to try harder than everyone else because the pulling is bad, right? Do you agree with that? Like you're just uh, eye throwing everything. Uh, it's 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 decent. It's like, there are classes that are worse at pulling. I like the only downside about Sahan Kuno is like Low AP spots, so like when you tap uh, tap the mobs, you can really sustain WP from them. Right. And also early game, if you don't really have much of WP, so you're gonna run out quick quickly. But I feel like um, places like Sakura and Ackman as well is also garbage because you pull up, push away the mobs with fatal blow and explosion. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> annoying. Yeah, they're in Bloody Monastery too. So, but I feel like it like Sakraya because the cooldowns are so long. Like after the initial burst, it feels like you have to work so hard using like shitty filler skills. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just like, make sure. This show was quite them. fun because you like you know you pull one pack, you kill them. You go to another pack, you kill them. You go to another pack. The next Sakraya, you just like do combo, you kill most of them, and you move on. Like it's it's a bit different, and that's why the cooldowns are. Packing you up even more. Yeah. Um, have you tried Awaken Kuno since they buffed it for PvE? 
no, after I, after I watched the Virulent stream, him grinding Hystra, I was like, okay, uh, that's not even worth bothering. Yeah. Like, cliche, it doesn't even help. It's still so bad. It didn't. It's still so bad, dude. Yeah, I don't know. People people kind of forget, like, Awaken Kuno and Awaken Ninja are, are, like, two of the worst grinders in the game. I know every Musa likes to say it's them, but it's not even close. <laughs> um, I don't know. How's, how's actually a, a tamer doing right now? Because they also uh, got buffed, right? Um, their buffs actually were okay. They're not, like, top tier or anything at, at all. They're probably, like, mm -hmm. middle to low middle. But better better than where we're at. They can actually get good trash at Sakraya. I think Tamer's pulling also is kind of tedious for them. Is a big limiter. I don't know. Um, do you think that Kuno is the best 1v1 class in the game? Um, and if not, which class? Do probably. You think it is? It's either Kuno or. Actually, I don't know, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's probably cool. Like, Wizard is also really strong, but then again, against... Uh, I think Wizard is slightly worse. And, like, Kuno against Wizard matchup, you know? Yeah. But then again, I feel like Wizard just has much easier time against other classes than Kuno. Because, like, as Wizard, you can just linger your stuff. And assage rate, right, obviously. As Kuno, you just you have so many gaps that you eventually just get CC'd somewhere. What about Awakened Sork? I like Awakened uh, Sork one v one. It's still decent, good. but they don't have damage. Like damage is bad. Yeah, they're gonna do the last patch. Fucked them so bad. Mm hmm. They like I yeah I've been fighting so many Sorks that yeah I'm I don't feel like the matchup is actually hard. Yeah. Do you have any Kunos that you learn from? Or who are like your favorite Kunos? Or who have you watched like in the past? Obviously, they, my fucking master, bro. Like, he touched me everything. It was uh, Saki Kuro. But he's not playing anymore. If you know who that is. No. no. What, what was the name? I can I can link you the channel. Did he. He was, was actually he... playing like, real. Uh, from the like, line. I believe. Oh, okay. Was he playing successfully? He used to be in Sovereign. No, no. He, I think he quit before. He was teaching me Awaken Kuno. Oh, uh, okay. Quite old. Yeah, he was too. Oh. I'm pretty sure he was the best Kuno in EU, EU. Or he probably still would be. So he, he hasn't played playing. for nine months or so? Yeah. Damn. Probably less spots. That's too bad, dude. Uh, yeah, in NA it was like, Kenner used to be like the best, and now he doesn't really play. I don't know. I think he hops on sometimes and mostly plays um, League of Legends. Mostly. I don't know. I feel like a lot of like people who played through a uh, lack in the day are already quit the game because it's so bad. I don't know. I don't feel like there's much of enjoyable content. Like, sieges are just so sad and not enjoyable at all. And node wars are slowly also going that way. Yeah, so are you doing uh, mostly T1 node wars or T2? I don't do anything right now. But see, I'm, I'm in tier, I mean, I'm in a like, casual guild right now. Mm -hmm. They do node wars every day, but, uh, well, they play on T4, so it's often the snipe, so... Uh, well, <laughs> I guess, but yeah, I don't really join the late, like last two weeks. I've been playing some other games mostly. Yeah. I don't really, like, even though I was legit having 100% attendance in every guild I was in, uh, I don't really enjoy anything right now. Like, even though Kuno is strong right now in one v ones and like small scale, then Node Wars and uh, Siege is just garbage. Also, probably because I play like a retard and I, I just go in and int. Because <laughs> I try to get a cool clay for next video and then I just suicide myself. Because <laughs> like, hey, it's, I know all about the, a... it's all about the medits, man. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, but there's a really good Kuno that's actually like playing towards uh, the large scale and he's really good at it. Uh, his name is Exile, if you know him. Exile? Exile. Oh, Exile, okay. Yeah. E X A L. He's also streaming from time to time and has a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Is um that ninja you fought Toyo? Is is he the best ninja in EU? That's hard to judge. I mean it's definitely one of the best ninjas, but I'm not sure. Like there's a lot of good ninjas in EU. Right. He seems like such a nice person. Maybe he's super toxic. I don't know. Maybe I'm just used to North American players. Wait, Toyo being toxic? No, I was saying Toyo seems super nice. He seems oh. like a super nice guy. Yeah, yeah, he is really chill. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Unfortunately, like, are, are you at all? Are you at all excited for Hashishin, or you don't really care? And do you think it's going to be good? I mean, I was kind of hyped at first, but then like after I watched a couple of clips, I just was like, "Oh no, bro, it's a, it's the same again, and it's gonna be like a fucking forty m again." And I don't really even enjoy that like his uh, aesthetics, I guess. Like, I don't know, it just looks weird, like, all the snakes and shit. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like his aesthetics, but like. That S block, man, I still can't get over the S block. It just looks and so And they dumb. don't have S block? Or... No, they, oh, do, they do, but they're pretty weak in S block. The guy looks like he pooped his pants and he's like trying to keep <laughs> the poop from falling to his ankles. I mean, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, I would too. I would try to, if I did poop my pants and someone was attacking me at the same. Dude, how shitty of a situation <laughs> would that be? Oh, uh, shit. That'd be pretty awful. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. Wait. Ro Rostain. Yeah. Or ro Rostain. Uh, since you, we talked about your, uh, your like, favorite Kuno or whatever, who is your favorite, like, uh, montager? Like, somebody that makes PvP videos oh, that you're like, shit. oh, that guy's really good. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, probably Score, but he doesn't do videos anymore, I believe. Who was it? Sc score? Score or School. Oh. I don't know how to read it. I'm not. It, he used to, I believe he's a professional actually a graphic or like, video editor. He does uh, Meiwa videos, or like he played Meiwa, he did oh. Meiwa videos. I actually could learn that yeah, he, did, he did some pretty good videos. But I think he's, like, I forget which class he is now. Looks he's, like he's an archer. Uh, he's recent. an archer. Yeah. yeah, filthy fucking archer. He's either archer or uh, a sork. He rebuilt. He traded one right click for another. Maybe one PvP <laughs> montage. Let's see this. But yeah, those were like the videos that like inspired me to make actually make the start making YouTube stuff for a video. Yeah, dude, your videos are epic, man. I I, I like the editing a lot. Thanks. Appreciate that. Have you dueled Skew? Is he an EU player? Mm, no, I mean he is EU, but like. I mean, last time I talked to him was like probably a year ago, and since I was like nobody, to then like he just ignored me, I guess. <laughs> like he didn't <laughs> really want to talk to me because I just met him in like Battle Arena, so he was probably pissed that I'm taking his time. And yeah, I don't really, I didn't ever talk to him other than that. I'm 50. And he's also in Devour or Armbus, like the guild that we are like have, we were, were having a, a drug grudge against. We were fighting them a lot, but he wasn't really showing up that much to PvP. I'm uh, 57 seconds into his Meiwa PvP montage number three, and you you can tell just in these 53 seconds that his fundamentals are better than Nashi's. <laughs> yeah, I could. <laughs> you could just see it, dude. He, dude, he holds RMB way better than Nayashi does, bro. Well, like, he holy <laughs> shit. I don't think he has any succession uh, stuff, because I think he already no. switched to Archer by then, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, he's got a PB, yeah. uh, Kuno montage from two years ago. Oh, That's my God. from Hakumi. 
Oh, okay, okay. He like put it together for someone else. Yep. Dude. So going a little bit further into like the editing stuff, what if somebody was like, I really want to make PvP montages, but I have no fucking idea where to start. Like, what would you tell them? Like, just start fucking YouTube videos. Like, start watching YouTube videos. Because that's uh, that's how you said you mm. learned how to do it. Yeah. Well, basically, I was first like watching you, uh, league YouTubers, and like putting up uh, montages, I guess. Like, there was that one guy. Actually, what was his name? I don't even remember. Like, he doesn't do any uh, YouTube anymore. But yeah, he was like legit just putting up clips and like adding some cinematics, you know, and like that type of stuff. And like, I really liked that back then. So I decided to also try to do something like that. And that's pretty much how I started. But yeah, I, I don't know, like, it's hard to m make something you don't really have idea about it. I guess like what I do is first I choose a song and I try to like find the uh, you know like the the moments in the song that would fit for the place or like you know like the beat drops and like something that's like rec uh, recognizable and like you know just uh think something out and try to like make uh visualize it and then like add some clips to it and just see how it goes <laughs> and it's just so random right just like a trial and error type of thing, basically. Yeah, like you just put something here and there and you see how it looks. And if it doesn't, you just try to some, do something else. Or like, yeah, just could also watch other people do wonders and inspire from them. It also works. Okay, I, I really like most of my like transitions and effects and stuff like that. Is either stuff I've seen someone else do or just in YouTube uh, tutorials. Like, I would never come up with such a thing, so, no way. <laughs> so, like, how long does it take you to, like, make, like, a montage video? Like, roughly, obviously, you probably haven't like, um, counted. Because I'm a slacker, like, it takes probably a few days, because I do, like, I don't know, like, one, two hours, maybe three, four hours each day. But, it's, like, you know, it's kind of boring to actually edit, but, like, it's so rewarding to see the end results. So yeah, I, I usually just like split it into a few days. And, but I, I would say probably like the last video I made, I mean, the, the montage I made probably took like 12 hours or something like that. Is that why you don't have any gear? Uh, that's <laughs> also the part of it, yes. <laughs> So, do you spend most of your time at Papu Island now, just doing the Papu versus uh, Otter Wars? Do you participate I in that? I spend most of my time at Star's End, Arsha, and sometimes at Ilia Island Baratrim, but really rarely. I don't think I've touched Baratrim for like last month. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't really do anything. I occasionally go to PvP and Star's End. If there is any happening at the moment and someone just calls for a backup, yeah, that's about it. I don't really play video for that last. I I maybe logged in just to take the reward and do the daily for like past two weeks. Feel that? Yeah. What do you feel like the game is missing right now? Like to get kind of people excited? Content, PvP content, and balance, and remove mercs, please. And like, I don't know, either limiting mercs or just removing them completely. But probably not because you like it's really good for like trying people. Yeah. But yeah, I think they should be heavily limited and just remove the HP from Siege and balance with that. And like that alone, I'm pretty sure that would make just the game so much more alive. And yeah. people would be actually willing to do PvP. Because like then you're like forced to actually create PvP guilds and like, you know, unite and and just go do stuff together and not just fucking sit in AFK guild and merc whenever you want. It's so cringe. I just think it's crazy how we basically have like four different like rule sets for PvP. Like you have like Node War rule sets, Siege rule sets, and then you have like RBF has a different rule set with the fucking like DR shit now. And then this you have so just cringe, like yeah. 
you have open world, which has like none of the other things. Yeah, and that's why I only do an open world, and I know it's just so much better. And it's the only thing that's do. fair. <laughs> yeah, like I loved like doing GVGs, and my guild pretty much just decided to not do and go play WoW. So I was kind of st stuck in there <laughs> without content anymore. Do you guys have a lot of desync related issues on EU? I hear you guys do as well, but yeah, I'm pretty sure they there is. But like. The game is so bad right now that I don't even feel like people are complaining about this thing. Like, I mean, sieges is just complete fuck fiesta. Like, it's just, yeah. uh, just go in and die to some random shit you don't even see. Or just get CC'd and protection or something. And it's like not fun at all. And like, having 100 wizards casting some stuff around you, you getting fucking 30 FPS, it's not enjoyable at all. Yeah. Like and uh, for Akuno, with I don't every that much AP, I can't even p kill people often. I, I even struggle with fucking killing rangers. That's so fucking sad. <laughs> I don't even, I don't, I don't know, dude, who fucking thought that adding 5k HP on top of everybody is going to be a good idea, dude. I don't really know. That's their, uh, just, you know, take a piece of fucking gum and just put it over the top of the hole and hope for the best. <laughs> the 5k yeah, HP thing is, is really bad it's so bad um I don't know man and like Korea having a ranger meta and like wizard not even being broken in the face it's like just a joke I don't even know bro. yeah the game's a mess right now for sure it, it's nice they're adding content because they it's, it's fun for new players, right? But they all this seasonal stuff it's just so annoying. Like, of course, I mean actually there is like, some uh, fun you can do because like there's a lot of people in there. Then like everyone's having s roughly the same year. You can do like some PvP in here and there. But then again, most of the people have no clue how to play the class because they're either new or starting on a different class. And yeah, like having to spend the time on seasonal characters doesn't give you pretty much anything to your main character. You're literally just wasting time. And then again, he, them holding a fucking uh, uh, tournament on seasonal characters just because they are too lazy to move their asses to put fucking precision crystals on trials. It's just a uh, cringe. Yeah. I don't know. Like, people having to spend their money to gear up a fucking uh, seasonal character that will be useless uh, in an, another week and spend like your money for crystals just to be relevant in uh, some tournament it's just so bad i don't know yeah uh <clears throat> res Min <clears throat> minaria points out that even more rule sets aoa doesn't have you're not allowed to have buffs in aoa and in battle arena you have 100 more fps than everywhere else yeah really <laughs> is that my chat's saying, yeah, 1.5 bill on season shit. 1.5 bill? You, you end up spending that much to get the stacks you need to do your stuff? No, I mean, like, the crystals. If you want, like, if people are actually buying, like, Elkars and, like, you know, gins and stuff like that, that's a lot of money just for the crystals alone. Uh, that's right. No, no way to really extract it from that seasonal gear. I mean, unless you have, the like, the, the tools to do it, um, no. Well, yeah, but those are come by. The extraction destroyed. tool is like a <laughs> once a month thing, maybe every other month. And yeah, then, yeah, it's rare. Yeah, well, if you, you have, have them stock up, then you're probably good to go. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just, I mean, it seems you, like you get a, a waste of, of time and effort. <laughs> you get a lot of value out of the seasons, like, but not, not if you're trying to PvP. Like, you get a lot of value out of it from, like, you know, doing the dailies and leveling up your character to 61 and just getting, like, the base level, like, pass done. Because you get so many fail stacks that it's like worth, but yeah, if you're getting up to PvP, I don't know. At that point, you're just better. I mean, if you're a new mm, player, it's yeah, still better, I mean, right? A lot of, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are enjoying it, so I mean, yeah. Yeah, do your thing. If you're enjoying it, just go for it, but I feel like just it's so stupid Like for all the old players. If you really have all the gear already, it's just a waste of time. Like, 
I mean, sure, you're going to get a few fire stacks, but that's it. Seems silly. I mean, I was happy to hear that they were doing something for newer players and making it like an easier transition into the game. But yeah, I was. Yeah, that's. I was. That's I would hope that here. they would make things a little bit more, you know, geared towards progressing your actual character after seasons rather than it just being useless stuff. Yeah. My only concern was like um, experienced veteran players being able to abuse the system for their own gain rather than it being focused and more uh, dedicated towards the newer players. No, uh, overall it definitely concern. benefits the newer players way more. Yeah, like there's definitely a lot of new players, but what does that make if then like old players are already quitting the game because there's no quest, uh, content to do? And yeah, PvP is dying, so what's the point? Yeah, yeah, you don't do something about it, and the new players also gonna quit eventually. Yeah, um, I heard that. You guys have any more questions for uh, for Sam? Yeah, it should be probably slow before he hops off. Uh, uh, no, like so. Nothing to hold him up with. Nah. All right. Uh, Rostam, or Rostam, you want to tell everyone where uh, where they can find your YouTube and your Twitch and all that stuff for your future content? Um, I don't know how much future content there will be, but <laughs> I'm not sure. It, it's uh, gonna your, be BDO for, but... for your previous content. Yeah, well, it's it's YouTube uh, Rustim and then uh, Twitch it's Rustim and underscore. I probably will still be putting out some uh, videos out of video. I actually have an idea, but I'm waiting for fucking odd little to some day release. And yeah, I don't know what else. <laughs> Do you guys have any more questions or something? Yeah, check out Rustam's YouTube channel. It'll be in the description on the video. Um, I'll link it here in chat right now as well. And then, um, yeah, no, I think I think that's it. Um, I do have one final question. Um, do you like Spiro's edits? Uh, yeah, it's actually really good. Spiro's I my boy. So I, just I, had I actually. Yeah, I talked to him uh, a bit in Twitch. Uh, DX, I believe, was asking me about some stuff as well. <laughs> yeah, he also he really does a lot of stuff, uh, nice stuff. Like, I believe he he messaged me one day and was like asking me here and there what I did there and something. And then like a few days later, he just put out the, what, that one like cinematic video it was really good. Like, I really enjoyed watching that. Yeah, his edits yeah. are really fucking cool. That's my boy. I just had to bring him up. Nice All right. Well, thanks for, for thanks for uh, for coming on, man. Thanks for giving us some of your uh, your time talking with us about thanks the game for and having... the videos and stuff. Yeah, appreciate you jumping on with us. Thanks a lot, boys. Have a good and... night, brother. Yeah, you too. See you later. Bye bye. All right. So what's what's Another next? Kuno we're going on about... the night. Ashashin. <laughs> Someone's asking in chat if uh, if it's not worth starting because the game is shitty and they're just going to quit anyway for new players. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, Sorry, you still get time? enjoyment out of it. It's just... Yeah. You got to remember, Stingy, all of us have been playing for like two plus years. Years. <laughs> so years. when everything is new, everything is still super fun. And I, I still have fun with the game. I'm just like, I need the new I need the new region and the new class to be out. And they've like delayed it so long. That it's like irritating, but yeah. if everything well, is it's... new, it's like I don't know. PA is also in a lot of experimental stages with like trying to figure out what to do to create hype for the game and you know keep uh, different aspects of the game alive, like PvP and whatnot, content, group content. They're trying to tackle a lot of things all at once, and it's kind of split in their their focus, from what I can tell. So like. Some of the newer stuff kind of comes out a little bit like half-ass, in my opinion. But they usually 
fix stuff and whatnot later down the road. Sometimes it just takes a while. It just really depends. Yeah. The game's still fun though, like Frosty said, for newer player experience. There's a lot, a lot to the game. So you I think definitely the real keep thing, your focus for I, a while. I, I think the real thing that I, I would say about Black Desert Online, if you were a new player and you were thinking about whether to get into it or not, is that if you don't take the game super seriously, you can get a lot of enjoyment out of it for how little of a fucking price it is. Yeah. Basically. It's exactly right. Because it's it's super fucking cheap. You can get it for free right now, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and it's like, if nothing else, you can just enjoy like the combat and stuff, which is by far the best part of the whole game, at least in my opinion. It so. is the best and worst part. Because <laughs> it's the combat's so good, but well, the net I'm code, saying, the net code like, is what makes you want to cringe. Right, but that's why I'm saying if you don't take it too seriously... Like the yeah. thing is, the, this game becomes very unfun when you start taking it very seriously and you start noticing all the small issues that it has because yep. it annoys you and it just kind of grinds on you uh, the longer you play. But if you if you're just playing it casually and you're just like not taking it all that seriously, I honestly think this is probably one of the the better MMOs out there to just like have fun on. Join some like casual guild that just hangs out in Discord. And just like I don't know, just chill, basically. Yeah, I can I can agree with that. I can get behind that. Uh, if you live in California, the net code's pretty good here. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, like I I don't ever really hear like PVE players like complaining about how shit the game is. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I never hear somebody who just like plays the game to go, go grind fucking uh, goddamn. Uh, lava monsters, whatever those cunts are called out there, and then they're complaining about like suck wizard. You know what I'm saying? It's always like hardcore PvPers that are like, "Bro, this fucking game!" Like, <laughs> yeah. For for me, it's just the state of wizard right now and and siege. But uh, I still thoroughly enjoy one v ones, like three v three, small scale, open world GVGs and stuff. It's just once too many wizards are there, it's not enjoyable anymore. Yeah, I mean, I'm in agreement with that. It's just my biggest problem is <laughs> like what uh, I've always been complaining about. It's just you know, you, the enjoyable part about the one v ones, the two twos, three v threes, and you know, the open world combat is just like when you get beat by something that's not in your control, and that's just like when the game kind of breaks down on you. And um, it's just nothing you can say or do about it. It's just how the yeah, game's that's... designed and like shit happens with it. You just got to like, you know, like Reslar said, just not take it seriously and just move on from it. That's why I, I can't really take 1v1 seriously, because like the amount of times that people just desync out of my fucking grapple, like it. It used to actually just drive me mad and drive me to the point where I was like on the brid like on the brink of quitting the game entirely. And so I just decided like I, I literally can't take 1v1s like seriously anymore. Because the smallest like mistake on the game's part, not my part. I mean I make plenty of mistakes, don't get me wrong, but when the game fucks up and it's not my fault, which happens quite fucking frequently, I it actually makes me lose my fucking mind. <laughs> Like, if it's my fault, it's whatever. I'm like, yeah, it was a mistake. I can fix it. I just got to work on it. Like, not a big deal. But whenever it's not my fault, it, it is the most infuriating thing. Yep. I can attest, and so can my old uh, broken second monitor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're talking about Hashishin or Global well, App? What are we talking about? I, I forgot about the uh, the Q and A that they had, and I just want to go over some of these questions and get your guys' opinions on their answers. Oh, they had another one of those. Yeah. So recently? they translated some of these, like a Heidel Ball at Home Q and A session. Um, and I just want I want to hear your guys' thoughts on their responses. So I'm going to go with this um, this first one here, where the question. Uh, the question asked was, right now, Conquest War in any region is very caster-reliant, and most competitive guilds will not take in players unless they play Wizard or Witch. 
Do you have any plans on making the other classes besides Wizards and Witch more competitive in large scale fights? And then they also say, um, they also ask, are there any plans to improve the situation of Node War being dominated by casters? Possibly make battles more similar to what you'd read in a medieval fantasy novel. And their answer was, when we looked at the data for the past couple of months, we found that the kill-death ratio was on the high side for Ranger, Wizard, Sork, Tamer, and Witch. We examined several possible reasons and determined that the Black Spirit Raid skill had too much of an impact on Conquest Wars, so we've oh been adjusting god. some of these skills accordingly. Additionally, oh my god. the up to 5,000 HP buff in Conquest War ended up increasing the importance of the already important Wizard and Witch, which is something we're also looking to improve through changes to the Conquest Wars Conquest War specifications. We believe that making changes to the actual Conquest War itself is more important than the significance each class holds. We previously announced the central changes in part two of the Q&A. We'll do our best to implement these changes to the game as quickly as possible. We're also looking into a variety of means of making sure you can enjoy Conquest Core experience, such as making more unique skills that can be used by guild masters, officers, new tactical elements with the goal of providing relatively weaker guilds, the feeling that this is worth a try. Or worth the challenge. Instead of approaching the problem with a focus on melee range or caster classes, we will strive to make it possible for each guild member to enjoy their role with their class. In the meantime, we will be placing more importance on improving Node War and Conquest War. So, just your initial reaction to uh, that response. They're looking at metrics that don't matter. 100%. They're not looking at everything. They're not taking everything into account. They're not looking into um, the the number of those particular classes versus other classes that are actually in the compositions of the guilds that are fighting. And they're just concerned about the kill death ratio. And you know, it, they're looking at the the BSRs. Really, the BSRs are not the issue. The, the PA is the issue. It has always been the issue. It's been talked about by many, 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 many different podcasts and other um, other different groups of people that have played the game that you know made this known for a long time now. Like it just ruins the game from a large scale perspective in terms of like other classes being viable. They're just not as good. They don't offer as much. It's just a fact. Yeah. Therefore, stack which wizards because you can. Like, I don't understand why they don't try to implement something that, you know, maybe kind of help force this. Maybe make it so that there's a limit on how many of X class you can have in a guild or something like that. Maybe that would be an idea. I mean, I know that's a little restrictive, but that would help focus guilds and their makeups to be fairly limited in that regard or just change that fucking skill entirely and make which wizards not as important uh Rezo, your your reaction um i don't know man Here, specifically to this let me let me get your reaction specifically to this when they say we looked at the data for the past couple of months found the kill death ratio is on the high side for ranger wiz sork tamer and witch and examined uh the possible reasons and found that uh, the Black Spirit Rage skills had too much of an impact on Conquest Wars, so they adjusted them accordingly. Like, I don't know, I, I know a lot of people in the community are super disheartened by that response because it just does not address any of the issues that Wizard has. I mean, sure, the 200% was a problem, but even if that's removed from the game, it doesn't fix any of the issues that Wizard was actually like. Yeah, that's like, that's presenting. like issue number like four on the list right i i think that's the real I issue you even say that's even on the list like that's really well i mean 200 percent meteor is fucking busted right i mean it, it is but like that's but, not when you ask people what the problem is with witch and wizard in siege they don't go oh yeah it's definitely the 200 percent meteor like that is not that's that's what i'm talking about it's like on their radar no one like how many how many years has Witch Wizard been dominating the scene prior to two hundred percent even being something that was relied on? Right. Like then, that's not even a factor. It's not even on the list, in my opinion. Like who gives a shit? Two hundred percent, whatever. Doesn't matter. The problem is the utility that that class offers with the damage output to go with it. It's just insane. I also love that. Uh... 
like tamers on here purely because of yeah. their 100%, but apparently <laughs> what tamers Zerker are left? <laughs> I know. But, like, it's probably like apparently... this one tamer, he's just dying over and over and over again. <laughs> he's just like, I don't know what's going on. All right, we're going to Apparently buff there's only apparently there's only like a handful of zerkers that actually manage to get kills with their ultis and Q buffs and every other zerker just like feeds horrendously. I I don't know why zerker isn't on this list but tamer is, but well, yeah. that's that's because uh, zerkers aren't getting the last hit with their Q buff. Other people are. And when they do yeah, all it's zerkers usually are, like zerkers are flank engaging. It's, it's instant killing 3 to 5 people maybe they're all whereas like the tamer all was killing like 10 or 15, you know. Dude, yeah, that's true. It's it, it's so, I hate. There has to be other analytics besides your kill death ratio in Node War. Yeah, kill death doesn't really like. That's a very incomplete. I don't know. Dude, you, it you means so you... little. It's like one. It's like one hundred and one. It's like guild, like guild officer slash leadership one hundred and one. It's like K, kill death ratio is not everything. Make sure you look at like. Are they listening to calls? Are they where they need to be? Are they healing people? Yeah. Are they see, there's yep. so many things that factor into yep. war besides and kill death ratio. It's like the top fraggers are not even always wizard and witch. It's like they're it's like they're looking into a dark room for a specific answer with their eyes squinted, one shot completely, and it's just like, what are you guys even fucking doing? You're just you're just looking in all the wrong places for the answers to the problem. So, the first paragraph is nothing but horrendous, including the the part where they admit they fucked up by adding a 5,000 HP buff to everybody while Witch and Wizard have a percent HP heal. But, uh, the second paragraph, I actually don't mind, because, right. I mean, th this, is the, this is the stuff that you want to hear, right? You want to hear uh, more, like, guild skills that can be used tactically, right? Like, give us more guild skills that can be used tactically, but for the love of fucking Christ, PA, let officers and guild masters hot bar guild skills. Like, yeah. seriously. Yeah, they need like, to do some quality of life for that if stuff. If you're gonna, if you're about to give us, like, more CTG level of an important guild skills, that shit has to be able to go on a fucking hot bar. It has to. Like, the, the fact that the GM has to open up the fucking guild tab, go to the fucking the goddamn skills window, and then click on the button while they're also trying to fucking run through the enemy's base on their goddamn horse, trying not to die before the fucking goes off. Like, it's so retarded. Like, put that... be Make it to put that shit on a hotbar. There's absolutely zero reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. But, I mean, I, I like the idea of more guild skills that are, like, actually important. Uh, I, I mean, they said, in the meantime, we'll be placing more importance on improving Node and Conquest War. I mean, I hope, dude. I really hope. Like, maybe they finally realize that people are really fucking unhappy. Uh, it took a while, but maybe they, they, they finally realize that. But, again, I think that while they seem to understand that people are unhappy... It's like they're 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 either blatantly ignoring or just like lost in translation somewhere, like why people are unhappy. The number no, one complaint, the number one complaint about large scale for the past ever, has been pearl, fucking uh, protected area, pearl abyss XD. It's fucking protected area. So like the fact that they don't even mention it in this post about like the problems of node war and what they plan to do to like uh take a look at and yada 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 like it it is the most disheartening and simultaneously like like maybe there's a chance like thing i've ever read in my entire life like seriously but uh, I, I i i do not like that they say we believe that making actual changes to the actual conquest war itself is more important than the significance each class holds. Because again, you just don't understand what the fuck is going on in your game. That's just a fucking lie. You can change the mechanics of siege and node war all you want. And while they may be good changes, they might be good and they might sort of revitalize the scene at least for a little while. As long as guilds are filling up their fucking rosters with 60 to 70 to 80 fucking witches and wizards, Node War and Siege is going to be fucking miserable. You need to understand this. 
and there's nothing there's no fucking change to node or conquest wars that's gonna fix that you have to change the classes i don't know why they're so terrified of changing witch and wizard probably because it's what most of their fucking player base plays if i had to guess but i don't know maybe that's wrong but jesus christ seriously Look at the top guilds in every region. They are majority witch and wizard. That should be a huge fucking red flag that it is not a mechanics issue of Node Wars and Siege. It is a witch and wizard issue. It is a supportive skill issue. It's PA, it's heals, it's speed spell. It's it's the fact that the highest DPS large scale class in the game is also the number one support class in the game. It's a problem with the fucking class. It is not a problem with fucking Node Wars or fucking Siege. Understand this. Listen to your player base. Jesus Christ. It's so frustrating. It's so disheartening. A question number two that I want to get you guys' reaction to. Uh, guilds that are victorious in Conquest War, this is the question, um, and occupy a castle cannot participate in other PvP content like Node War. Could you consider letting these guilds participate in Node War even if it's limited to Tier Four nodes? And then their answer is: by becoming a lord, by becoming the lord of a region, the guild agrees to be bound from combat. So instead of allowing this guild to participate in Node War, we are considering a different form of PvP with the current structure. In the past, we made it so that guilds that occupied Calpheon, Medai, and Valencia would automatically declare war upon each other to alleviate this situation, and we will look into ways of further expanding this. We set up the present structure of Conquest War with the intention of giving more guilds opportunities, so we currently don't have any plans to change this uh, spec of Conquest War. If the structure is revamped into a hopscotch capture the zone form, there may be further changes, including changes to the present structure. Uh, I don't know. Basically, Sounds if you own thing, a castle, if you own a castle, you will never be able to participate in any other. Said they, but they also said in there that they would look into the doing something. From what I understand, they said if they change anything, then they'll look into doing other changes with that change for further changes. For, Future changes, maybe changes down the road changes. <laughs> Basically. Oh, Jesus Christ. Nothing today or ever remotely yeah. close. Well, then, yeah, then it's going to remain to be shit. Well, I know Rezler is passionate about the um, not being able to node war when you own a territory thing. So I was curious his thoughts well, on the no fact sense. that it'll never get well, changed. Well, I mean, I it, think it they makes need absolutely to. absolutely no sense because you, if you're capturing a territory, unless you're you need to defend it. it Unless you're being handed it, which happens quite often these days, let's be honest. But if you're capturing a fucking territory, you're in, like, a top siege guild, right? You are in a PvP guild. I would assume that you enjoy PvPing, I guess, unless you're fucking Snake. So, the fact that, like, the top PvP guilds in the game, their reward for, like, winning the big prize, the big, you know, the big the big golden fucking loot chest at the end of the, the goddamn road... Uh, is they no longer get to participate in the content that they enjoy. Like, hello? Like, that is the dumbest shit. Like, I have never understood that fucking rule. And the fact that they give some weak-ass, like, RP fucking excuse for it, by becoming the lord of a region, the guild agrees to be bound from combat. Like, what the fuck? Like, what kind of ERP shit is that? Hello? That makes no sense. You are literally preventing players that enjoy PvP from doing what they want to do in the game. Like, are you serious? And your excuse is some fucking RP answer? So dumb. Yep. Agreed. I always thought that was a silly system. I get what they were trying to go for, because they're trying to say, well, you need to let the weaker guilds that weren't able to take it have an opportunity to get other funds and stuff to get stronger, but they just make castles so valuable that it doesn't matter. I mean, the other thing is, is like, it's hilarious that they, they're they like, oh yeah, you gotta let the weaker guilds have like a shot, but uh, like Mercs 
prevent weaker guilds from ever yeah. having a shot at becoming as strong as like the top siege guilds. It's true. So the merc system uh, ended up being a, a countermeasure to prevent weaker guilds from having an opportunity to try. Because why would I ever try to make a siege guild when I can just merc into an actual like a legitimate like wins territories siege guild? Why would I try and become a, a, a fucking rank 10, rank 11, rank 12 siege guild? Go through all the troubles and the fucking heartbreak and the headache and just the fucking all the bullshit politics that siege is involved with. Why would I go through any of that when I can just get 20 fucking mil for joining a guild that's already established and that I don't have to deal with when the war is over? Hello? Use your brains. Um, I do, I want to talk about this, que where, this is one where I don't like the question or the answer. Also, the question kind of confuses me. Actually, I don't even know. Before I get to the answer, tell me what you think uh, the question is even asking. The question is, when will the PvP system be updated? It's not fun having to rely so heavily on skill usage and debuffs. Wait, what? Yeah, when will the PvP system be updated? It's not fun having to rely so heavily on skill usage and debuffs. So do they want to just hold left click? I mean, I guess that's what Suck Wizard is, right? You just hold right click and it <laughs> plays for you. Maybe um, that's what they want more of. Their answer is the current foundation of the PvP system, which is a focus on each class of skills, will be mostly left untouched. However, we agree with you that playing the same way every day can be tedious and boring. And that's why we believe that PvP with the new set of rules is what is needed. We will do our best to consider how we can really make you feel the changes. Additionally, while it is a bit too early for us to reveal the exact update details, we are not finished with the development of each class's unique features and skills. That scares me. That really does. Three more revamp skills in every class, please. Come on, win! I mean, the thing no, is, that... is I, I feel like Succession kind of, like, it fixes that issue, does it not? Like, this is kind of a weird question to ask post-Succession and post, like, the the new skill uh, saving. Because now you can save an Awakening skill tree and a Succession skill tree. So if you ever feel like, I'm getting bored of playing this way, you can literally just, like, swap to Succession and play the class a different way. This is kind of a weird question and a weird answer given the the state of like the most well, recent updates. That weird answer actually kind of brought out what they're planning to do. It sounds like they plan to rework the PvP CC system. You think so? I don't know. Also, I I That's I don't it understand. Like. It's not fun having to rely so heavily on skill usage and debuffs. Like, like what the fuck else are you wanting to rely on? <laughs> Like I, I don't understand I don't, it either. I maybe, don't understand. maybe you're supposed to auto walk over people. Maybe debuffs. Maybe like maybe debuffs. I can kind of understand because like I get frustrated whenever I fight a Sork on Berserker because it feels like literally the only way I'm going to be able to win is if I get devastation on them. So like I I guess debuffs I kind of understand, but skill usage like you mean playing the game? Hello, like what like what does that even mean? Skill usage. Or does it mean like like a like player skill? Like I shouldn't have to like be good to like win in PvP. Maybe that's what this means. Going back to the suck wizard, I should be able to just hold down right click and then kill my opponent. It's only Please fair. God, no. Um, I, I'm very confused Frosty, about do, what that do is. Do you have the yeah. link to this? Uh, yeah. Someone in chat's asking. Okay, so. Next question. This one, uh, this one uh, tilts me. Um, why is <laughs> this one such a those other ones didn't tilt you? I mean, a little bit, but this <laughs> this one really goals me. Why is such a wonderful game like Black Desert still limited to the obvious and boring guild versus guild PvP? Do you intend to add arenas or other PvP systems for players to enjoy? Also, will you consider territory wars to break the? Hegemony, which I don't know what hegemony is. Did they mean homogeny? Of some of the large guilds. Probably. And then their response is, and remember, they said PvP arenas. That The phrase was in there. The response is, as announced at the Hideo Ball at home, we are planning to host siege wars between actual regions. For example, we held this recently 
for the first time with Southeast Asia vs. Thailand Conquest War, two regions in Asia service directly by us. We hope you'll stay tuned for more in the future. Besides just actual regions, the territory war between Calpheon and Valencia that was previously tested in Black Desert Global Labs is once again under development. For now, the updates for Node War, Node slash Conquest War will come first, but afterwards we plan to expand upon the territory war as well. They literally just completely Ignored skirted arenas. over the fact that arenas was asked about. <laughs> and they've talked about oh! arenas before, too. <laughs> it's never coming. It's not going to come ever. I have to play Blade and Soul as a side game. I'm forced. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I don't know. Like, I, the region v. region thing is neat, I guess. But it's kind of like a fucking gimmick. Like, I, I would rather have some actual substance, you know? Like, I, I don't know. It, that's... I feel like they they think that more people care about, like, that shit than anybody actually does. Like, does anybody really give a fuck about, like, the territory war? Like, it kind of sounded cool at first, but aside from the initial, like, oh, that sounds interesting, I feel like nobody gave a shit about the whole, like, what was it, Medea versus Calpheon thing or whatever. Like, aside from the initial impression of, oh, that sounds kind of interesting, like, nobody really cared. All right, yeah, he- he- hegemony fairly- is a word that I, I've not heard before, and it means the leadership or dominance, especially by one uh, country or social group over others. Hegemony. Interesting. That's a big word. I've been uh- educated. Mm-hmm. Um, here's another one. Uh, wait, where is it? Um, that is kind of interesting, I guess. Someone asks if once you get all your skill points, you keep gaining skill points, and if they have any plans to do anything with those remaining skill points. And they say, um, if you think about it, we put a lot of, uh, we all put a lot of effort into earning skill points, but once you learn all the skills you want, you don't really care about getting more skill points. That is what we want. We want players to no longer concern themselves with skill points once they've finished. We've considered providing additional perks for remaining skill points, but we thought this would only result in unnecessary pressure to get more skill points, so we plan to maintain this direction for now. Uh, okay, okay. I mean, I don't honestly care about that. It's not a big deal yeah. to me. Well, I was it's like small curious, potatoes. Like, it is, it is. I, it's just odd. I, I do wish a little bit you could exchange them for like something not even that valuable, because they're completely useless. Well, like turning them in for extra XP kind yeah. of thing? Or like, you know how... Um, yeah, or or that. Like, whatever. You know, that, like kind of they did with the auras, so you can exchange an aura for a memory fragment, where it's really not even that valuable to do it, but it's like, at least there's something there. Yeah. I don't know, it's weird having 600 available skill points for no reason or maybe or maybe taking those extra skill points and turn them into profession based skill points so like you know xp for like cooking or something like that yeah anyway basically so the the conclusions are uh the 5000 hp thing maybe just maybe it'll get changed wizards are perfectly balanced now that meteor got nerfed a little bit in 200 (laughs) percent And arenas are coming in the form of territory wars with other regions. So, all good news. Um, <laughs> moving on to... Oh, Hashishim got its release date. Bear back one second. We are getting the pre-creation for the Hashishim on August 26th, 2020. Which is three and a half weeks away from now I, uh, <laughs> my I presume it's because of localization you know? <laughs> it's always localization dude mm-hmm. You're just localization trying to, trying localization to the down, right? they um the the console version is in a different language so yeah makes sense to me uh, still no word on uh, Odalita, eh? <laughs> no word on Odalita. 
That's probably. I don't not think coming. we're ever gonna get it. They, the way that they've just acted like it doesn't exist, I honestly feel like we're just never gonna get it. Yeah. Maybe they forgot about it. Localization, dude. Like at least with like at least with the, like a situation on console with Cafres, right? Like the 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 people, even though it's uh, just fucking retarded excuse, but they literally say like, "Oh, we don't think you guys are ready for Cafres yet. Like it would result in too big of a gear gap, yada yada yada, et cetera, et cetera." Like we don't even have like an excuse. As to why we don't have Odalita yet, they literally just act like it is not a region that exists. Q Mayo points out that Odalita in Global Labs already has English voice acting and localization. Nah, they're still working on the localization. I haven't, I haven't may, tested it to see myself. You yeah, may, so you may, supposedly they're still dealing with that problem. You may think that it's <laughs> localized, but... Nothing is ever truly yo- localized. So I was I was pointing out now actually how we are not getting Hashishin until August. Well, the pre-creation is August 26th. The actual release is going to be September 2nd. And uh, it's probably because of localization. How does that make <laughs> you feel? I mean, the, the more they delay it, the better, honestly. it's The game's only going to get shittier the moment it gets introduced. Why is that? The third block jump class. <laughs> Oh god, dude! Every yeah, every assassin class is gonna shit on that class, dude. Uh, question though: the if the awakening doesn't come out for what three or four weeks, that means that the earliest we're gonna have awakening and succession at the end of September or early October. Is that is that not absurd yeah. to you guys that we have to wait that long? The class came out in July, early July, July seventh on uh, KR and. The end of July in on console, and we're not going to be able to play it like legitimately play it for like Node War, Siege, um, actual PVE and PvP until October. So when you say is that absurd, <laughs> you mean is that absurd for like a standard game that people would have normal expectations for, or is that absurd for this company? Uh. Yes. Because for this company, it's pretty par for the course. But for, like, a game that people hold normal standards for, which is not this one, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty fucking absurd, in all honesty. Considering that uh, it already is released in our region, just not on our platform. Yeah. Um, Van Doken is asking if Fiery Dandy is 100% going to be out for Odalita. I'm pretty sure. They haven't announced any... Localization willing. Yeah, provided the localization is ready for it in time, it'll be out. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on to. Uh, dude, I don't. Do, do you think you think Hashishin's gonna be busted now, she? Or not really? A region? Oh, he said be right back. It's hard. Oh, to there say. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely hard to say. I like. I. Shaky had me play with him a little bit when he was testing it out. And mind you, obviously it's brand new, so. But um, it somewhat seems balanced. There's definitely openings on it, but when people actually get their hands on it, in terms of like PvPing it with it for days, weeks at a time, um, they'll probably learn some broken fucking way of utilizing it. So. Yeah. All I right. don't know. On to uh, bigger and better things. Oh, uh, I'm kind of curious. Do you, So they're releasing Hashishin lined up with Season 2. They added early Season two, uh, 1 graduation. So this Wednesday, if you have a seasonal character, you'll be able to transfer it over to a normal character. Which, that that I really like. I, I just... I think, actually, they're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit with releasing the Hashishin with Season 2. Because I think there are a lot of people that, let's just say the Hashishin came out this week, uh, just as an example. There's a lot of people that would buy weight and storage and inventory and whatever the hell for it, um, costumes. And then in three or four weeks when Season 2 comes out, uh, people would play a different class. And a lot of them would probably buy weight and a costume and blah, 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 blah. So I I think it's kind of weird that they're lining those two up as if they have anything to do with each other. 
I don't know. Yeah. I, I need to go into their meetings. I need to start being a part of these meetings at PA. <laughs> uh, good vibes. Get me a job there. All right. So let's move on to Global Labs. Uh, Global Labs, they added a new boss to the Crow's Nest thing. Have you guys participated in that a uh, single time? No. No, I'm missing out. It's actually it's it's actually kind of fun. I think they're adding the teleporter this week on our server. I'm pretty sure either this week or next week. Um, it looks like a Musa. It's called Yuho. Appears with low can probability. You link me that? The global apps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. There you go. Um, so yeah, one new boss in the Crow's Nest thing, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then uh, at Fadus, they added a supply chest that has been found in Gory Wood Forest. In the Gory Wood Tree Hunting Ground, you can now discover a group of Fadus, which are protecting supplies to be transported when hunting with a low probability. You can steal the supplies by defeating a group of Fadus that protect them. So... I don't know what the rewards will be for that, or if that's going to be a totally oh. different area. Sounds like you're saying a bunch of betas. Fadus, fadus. They, it's the translation is saying patus. But yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, I don't <laughs> oh, know. No. I I kind of like these new new things though that they're adding to the PVE spots, like changing them up a little bit. Like the rare boss spawns or the random events. Um, I think they're kind of cool. So yeah, there's going to be this. I don't know what the rewards are, if it's gonna, if the mobs are any different from normal Fadus. But but there's that. Um, there are rumors of... I, I got to give... I got to do the, the RP version of this. There are rumors of an unexpected soul roaming at the tomb of Sherikin. When hunting at the Sherikin's tomb, an ancient Sherikin soul appears with a low probability. The ancient Sherikin soul follows the adventure and moves to the nearby Sherikin warriors. When the Sherikin warriors die near the ancient Sherikin souls, their souls are drawn to the ancient Sherikin souls. When an ancient Sherikin soul takes up enough of the warrior's souls, uh, reveal it on the spot to test the adventurer's power. The ancient Sherikin souls appear only during daylight hours. So you can, you get a boss after, like once the spirit thing uh, spawns and follows you around Sherikin Necropolis. After you've killed enough of the mobs, it'll turn into a boss that you fight, basically. Say Ancient Sherikin Souls five times straight. Ancient Sherikin Souls, Ancient Sherikin Souls, Ancient Sherikin Souls, Ancient Sherikin Souls, Ancient Sherikin Souls. <laughs> it was just mentioned a lot in that fucking sense. It sounds like Sherikin Souls. Like, that's one word. Yeah. Sherikin Souls. Yeah. That's cool, right? That's... Uh, no, I mean they're trying to they're trying to add like uh diversity into like the grind spots, right? Because aside from like the models and like specific attacks that maybe some of the like bigger mobs have, like every grind spot is the exact fucking same, right? So this is their way of trying to like add some like diversity, you know? Yeah. Someone's asking if it's possible to hit Master One fishing in four days. I have no idea. How fast are you fish spotting? <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose if you're popping buffs. Um, have you guys tried the new grind spot, the Witch's Chapel grind spot? I've seen it, but I haven't tried it. Dude, it's actually kind of cool. I, I think it's way better than Polly's. I don't know if the skill XP heard... is better, but the money is better, for sure. Yeah. I heard it's supposed to be like competition with polys and in, in money and skill XP. Yeah, so um an hour gets you like fuck. I don't I don't even know now off the top of my head. It's like twelve thousand trash or something, but you get so many relic shards and a decent number of Kafras, like five five to seven Kafras in an hour. Bunch of relic shards. The trash loot is okay because you get so much, it's like not it, it's it's like the mob density is actually insane. Like, your pets, you have to manually loot sometimes. It's, like, that good. Even though you're standing on one spot. But it's kind of it's kind of cool. I, I really hope they release a higher level version of it. In one of the, like, in Odalita or Valencia or something. It's actually a really cool spot. 
Uh, and killing people there is funny because they get tilted. Although the respawn is literally right next to where the tombs are, so it's like if you kill someone there, they're literally back immediately. Um, Ross, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little surprised you haven't talked about the most important thing in these whole notes. It's because I don't know the, what it is. The return function that can be used after the base battle slash occupation battle has been added. Oh yeah. For the return function Forgot. can be used after the base occupation battle of the guild in which the person participated is completed, and it is a function to return to the area before moving through the gather. Thank you, Google Translate. <laughs> Essentially, whenever you click the bell to teleport to your base, you're now going to be able to go back. Yeah, what? at the end of Node, when Node War concludes, you'll be able to actually go back to where you took the port from. Now, really? this it won't let you if you're overweight or if you have like trade items or something. It has like some rules, so that way you can't exploit. But yeah, basically after you take the the Node War teleport, you'll be able to teleport back to where you came from at the end of Node War. It's pretty interesting. So if you're if you're grinding in a, a grind spot and you uh, you're a piece of shit that doesn't actually like fully buff up before war, now you can teleport to the base and then just teleport right back after the war is over. Or if you're a piece of shit that doesn't get in your elixir groups. Right, Rezar? Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that, that's actually, that's the best thing that's ever happened in this game. It's definitely up there. I'm not gonna lie. That's a pretty like, good quality of life feature for that, yeah. And yeah. you know what? Prom prompts to them, because I never thought about adding a, a second teleport when the node war was over before. I don't know why, that just never really came to mind as something that should be added. Yeah. But the second somebody told me about this change, I was like, oh my god, that is going to be so nice. Yeah, you can go I, right back to your grind spot. I don't like it. I think they could have done it better. They could have gone full Pearl Abyss and made it so a bunch of those random griffins from Velia show up to where you're at and they fly you back to your old spot. And it takes 25 yeah. minutes. Or the or the the air balloon system that isn't in yet. No, we have that. We do have the air balloon. Or do you mean the the airship? The airship. We, we have the hot air balloons where you could go talk yeah, to an NPC. That shit's yeah, awesome too. To, you have to do them if you're doing the goddamn quest line. You have to ride the one from Calfion to fucking uh, Kama. It's a hot miserable. air balloon. Yeah. Is it fun? Did you have fun? It's miserable. Don't lie, dude. It's one of the worst things I've ever done in this game. Was the view actually awesome though? I don't know. I went to make a sandwich because it was like 10 minutes long. Huh? Didn't you already have a sandwich just before you started it too? So you just had two sandwiches? Correct. I'm very <laughs> fat. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, let me see. There's nothing else on Global Labs. Um, did I skip anything? I don't think so. Is there anything you guys want to talk about? Is there uh, any Mewa news, Nayashi? So that's just utter depression? No. <laughs> oh Let's, uh, are we out of topics? <laughs> is that what this is? Is this why you're asking? Yeah, do you want to talk about something? No, I was going to say, let's plan the next community night. Let's do that while we have a little bit of time. Okay. So what do we, we want to do next weekend? Uh, Sure. Possible. Uh, no, actually, next weekend does not work for me. I can't do it next weekend. I'm going to be gone the whole weekend. Really? Why? Um, a bit, Some band shit. I don't know. Video recording. It's going to take both days. Uh, uh, I'll be here Recording the newest music video, dude? Yeah, actually. I'll be here like Sunday morning for a little while. That was the only time I got, but Saturday all day and Sunday all afternoon I'll be gone. So it'll be hard. Well, what about like Friday? Uh, Friday would work. And, Friday would work? Yeah. Alright, so what, uh, Nayashi, are you, you're still working, right? You work yeah. at home. It d depends on what time. Okay, so what, what time do you normally get off of work? Five o'clock, or what? Uh, roughly, yeah. Uh, five okay. to six. So what if we did, what if we did five o'clock? Uh, five o'clock Nayashi's time. So four o'clock my time, and then two o'clock your time, Frosty. 
That way you'll you'll have just gotten up and uh you know <laughs> That's pretty <accurate. laughs> Yeah. Um What are we gonna do? Should we change it up? I don't know. Fucking whatever we want. If we have enough people, maybe we can play uh there's this game that everybody keeps telling me is really fun and it's uh, apparently like five dollars. So okay. maybe we can get some people to play it. It's called Among Us. Oh, people actually Among like Us? that game? Alright, I'm gonna play it today. I've heard I have heard literally nothing but people like praise the game. And apparently it's only five dollars, so I don't know. I haven't checked it out, but it's one of those like games where you have to lie to people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like to see, right? It's like where you're yeah, pretending like, not to yeah, be exactly. the bad guy. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly pretty like interesting. All right, I'm I'm starting this grave, this trader's graveyard thing right now, dude. It's like Kuno actually. This is another spot that Kuno sucks at, dude. <laughs> also, so I don't know if this place is gear. It right. doesn't. It says recommended AP is 160 in the patch sense, but it doesn't have any icon on the map. It still just shows the old. Hex Sanctuary that shows 50 to 52. But they're kind of like... I guess they're the same mobs. But they feel... The big ones feel super tanky. So, Community Night... Uh, Wait, should we all... If, at Community Night, should we all have, bring Arby's? Ar Arby's? Can we Why? make that a wreck? Well, because it's a dying business and we have to save them. <laughs> 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 We have, they to have use, the meats, man. we have to we use our podcast to meat. save that company, dude. So, Friday, next... Uh, th well, I guess it's this Friday. So, this upcoming Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern, uh, we'll be hanging out in Discord for a while. Don't know how long. Could be a couple hours. Could be several hours. I think the last one we had was the EU one, right? And then yeah. I think... I think I wasn't Nashi able to could, be there. Yeah, and I actually couldn't make it. Frosty hung out for like, I don't know, like two hours, three hours. And then me and all the fucking EU kids were sitting there just fucking around for probably like another three to four hours. So, uh, yeah, just come in, hang out, say hi, talk to us, play games with us. If we're playing another game, you know, assuming we have room, feel free to join how in. People, how many people uh, can play it Among Us? I don't know. I assume at least eight, because most of those types of games ha can support up to eight people. Right. So, but I don't know. I mean, we don't have to play that game. It's just like a suggestion, because everybody, like, I have several friends now in different friend groups that have been like, dude, we should play Among Us. I'm like, oh my god, I keep hearing about this fucking game. And it just tells you that people recommend games here? No, it's just like... I need to figure out why it's so good, apparently, and why it's better than the 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 lying type party games that I already have, apparently. Well, I I think it's different. I think it isn't it more board game style than like Deceit, which is like third person thing. I don't know. I don't know. There's some sort of um game I can't remember what the hell it's called. A buddy of mine had it. It's uh you log on with your mobile phone to the website. And uh, I'm already checked out. I, Sounds like a scam. No, the mobile no, it's, version. Uh, the the actual the actual game you have on your your main Wii or whatever, and um, it's basically like a party game, so to speak. And it's uh, you basically are doing. Oh, are you talking about Jackbox? Yes, Jackbox. That's it. Yeah, Jack, yeah it's the Jack, murder Jack game, the, the murder, the murder one. You know what I'm oh, talking about? Oh, you're talking about a murder trivia party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, always, yeah, always yeah. found that one pretty funny. I've never played that, but that's another one that I've like heard people talk about. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. Jackbox is interesting because they have like a lot of different games. Okay, we're just bullshitting about nothing now. We got to fucking. Like, <laughs> let's do comments. Oh, yeah, we're going to do comments. <laughs> uh, all right, let's... All right, I'm actually so going got... to have to drop off. All right. What the fuck? What? We were supposed to ladder all day on League. What? <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting woman aggro. Oh, no. <laughs> Alright, well check Sounds out good. Nayashi. Uh right. Nayashi underscore N A. That's twitch.tv slash Nayashi underscore N A. Uh Woman Aggro OP. Uh glad you were able to join us this week at least. You missed the last two weeks. Yeah, dude. Hopefully, Welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed your vacation. We expect you to work overtime to make up for it. Um, Hell yeah. <laughs> 
All right, brother. We'll uh, we'll catch you around. All right, man. I'll catch you guys next time. Later, bitch. All right. So, community night this upcoming Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern. We're locking it in. Uh, I'm going to make an announcement on Discord. So, make sure that you're in the Discord. We're going to be hanging out in there for at least a couple hours minimum. Uh, either fucking around in Battle Arena or do, fucking doing whatever. King of the Hills. Uh, or we might be playing other games. So, just come in and say hi. So, Rage Run? Yeah, maybe we'll do the Rage Run. So, What's Rage Run? It's a game we came up with at the last community night after you abandoned us, and it's mm. something that I do on stream uh, occasionally now. Uh, it's kind of like... I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like a shitty version of BDO football, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I did hear about this. Yeah. Dude, this is why I wanted to play SCB football, but we couldn't find it on StarCraft. It's actually so fun. Where literally you're just like a worker, a Terran worker. It's like 11 versus 11, and you have like a beacon on one of your hands, that, or one of your SCVs that represents the football. And all the other person has to do is one of his SCVs has to just make contact with yours, and you drop the ball. <laughs> so you're like just trying to run your SCVs and block with the ones that don't have the ball. <laughs> it's so fucking fun, dude. And absurd. Plus, I like that the SCVs explode. They explode and then start at like your end zone every time they get touched by other SCVs. <laughs> Shit is so fun. All right. All right. Are you doing comments uh, or am I doing yeah. comments? Here we go. Comment number one from Triga first. Pog Champ. Uh, Ambitious Panda says this game hurts my soul. Uh, Same. Same, <laughs> Minaria, brother. <laughs> Minaria says, FYI, the leaked picture of someone getting banned with 143 bill reduction is a fake. It was posted in a thread on the forums too, and GM do confirm that it was neither the message nor the format they used for such alerts. Also, the new settings interface was added last week, I believe. We should get them soon. Okay. Yeah, that was, uh, I think, because yesterday, or yesterday, last week when I was on Global Labs with the Hashishin, I was asking, like, what the interface was, because it looks different when you go to settings. Um, Desgidora, Desgidora says, hash coming September 2nd, XD. I know. Ambitious Panda says, nice cat meow at 113.27. Yeah, my cat, what he does... When I'm recording, here, let's see if you can hear this. Oh, nice. Meow! <laughs> it's like a wig buried deep in the back. Oh, fuck, I closed it. I'm an idiot. Oh, I gotta reopen the comments. One sec. Uh, yeah, dude, my cat likes to fucking hop around on the cat tree behind me. He goes, like, once or twice a day, he goes into what we describe as tiger mode, where he just... He's like looking around as if things are attacking him and he's running around all fucking crazy. So he just starts meowing and his claws are extended fully. Lasts about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like adorable but also scary because like you go over to like, are you, what the hell are you doing? And he's like acting like you're trying to kill him. He doesn't want to break character basically. Right. All right. He's like Robert Downey Jr. And uh... In uh, <laughs> Tropic Thunder. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Tropic Thunder. <laughs> that shit is all time, all time. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Ziba says September second for the Hashishin. I know. Uh, Rez, do you have any interest in playing the class? Now that we kind of know it, like pretty thoroughly, we know kind of what it nope. looks like and does. I'm gonna be honest, man. I, I lost a little bit of my hype for it. <laughs> After messing with that, I, I mean, arguably you were overhyped too early, so yeah, that was bound to happen. True. Like every MMO player ever, every time another MMO gets uh, announced, people get like super overhyped, and then it actually like comes out, and they get their hands on it, and then they're like, "Hmm." Yeah, I've been thinking about playing Awakened Ranger lately. You definitely shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, since I can't Nodewar in Siege anymore anyway. You know, since I can't kill anyone. Wait, anybody. why can't you Nodewar in Siege? Since nobody dies. Anymore. Uh, Alright, Nodewar, I, I can't Nodewar. But we, in we Siege, like, up, literally, it, we, it's crazy. We moved up to T2s last week, dude. You better watch out, we're coming for you. Oh, shit. Dude, just imagine, <laughs> imagine in Siege, like, 
imagine being my gear and like comboing full comboing someone and they're at like 45 percent health after it and then you uh, ask them i don't have to because yeah if i had a uh, your gear full bloom <laughs> yeah no dude that's the thing i i've had archers full bloom me in siege and i get up it's so weird it's so fucking weird. I don't weird. believe it. Dude, it's happened. Pixar didn't happen, dude. Um, full, bloom, full bloom goes... <laughs> don't. God damn it. You're <laughs> looking at... Hates that fucking... <laughs> yo, yo, actually, hold on. People listen to the podcast. Frosty's favorite meme of all time is the Burr meme. So just if you want to really make his day, just send him all types of fucking Burr memes. Just Guardian goes or Wizard goes or Full Bloom goes. He, he loves them, dude. Those are his favorite types of memes. <laughs> they're so bad, and they're so just not so like low effort and bad. <laughs> Ugh. Every time I hear someone laugh at it, I'm like, "That's not funny. Why are you laughing?" That that maybe was funny in March when the first hundred and fifty thousand people did it. <laughs> but it's fucking August now. Stop saying something goes burr. All right. Zero eight or uh you're looking at you're looking at Glory says won't lie, the hyperbolic time chamber comment got me. I forgot what it was in reference to, but yeah. I think it, we were talking about uh console players coming to PC. Oh uh, yeah. They just got they're supercharged, do they come over? Although they actually the problem is they're in the hyperbolic chi- time chamber, but they never learned how to use their arms and fingers. Because they only had to learn how to walk. <laughs> so they come out and, like, yeah, their legs are strong. But their hand-eye coordination and their arm dexterity and hand dexterity is poor. So it doesn't really actually help. <laughs> Zero H says, Bennett, Shadow of Gaha's clones don't have collision. So you can tell who's the real one. Just You just have to kill the real one. Uh, Kunga the Warhammer fuck. You have to back attack float him when he charges a super every 15% <laughs> HP. You have five chances to do it. And you have to break his super three to five times or else he uses a doomsday mechanic to spin. You'll die even if you V. After you CC break him three times, he'll rage spin into a wall. After that, any CC slash CCs him so you can just uh, do bad things to him against a wall. The suck warrior also can be knocked down if you use a float on him. Uh, When he's charging his ground smash to break it, CC break the ground smash and scars too, I think. And use a KD skill to down him for combos. It's the first time BDO bosses had interesting mechanics. Yeah. Well, you know what's so funny? It's like you had a one-shot mechanic and bam, there you are. You're basically wow, right? It one-shot me. I was like, hey, this feels like wow. <laughs> I, I I wish that Kunga's actual title in game was the Warhammer fuck. <laughs> Kunga, <laughs> parentheses, the Warhammer fuck. Yeah. Uh, Remy says TLDR. <laughs> uh friend got set to negative 45 bill twice one account each bandwave couldn't be happier <laughs> get fucked remy's friend um okay so I, I i'll just read as long he says if you look at the market crash starting around the fourth uh it looks like rmt's accounts for around five percent volume of silver pushed through the market friend got hit immediately after uh he committed suicide by roulette paypal wouldn't let him charge back bikini pandy Bikini Panda, even if they claim their methods were safe. Bye bye, $6,000. Yikes. Queso81 says, Frosty, remember the game, Genie? I do. <laughs> Dude, do you remember how funny it was? You had to buy a cartridge to put your cartridge in? Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Alright, Kawhi in chat says, Wizard uses Voltaic, you go burr. So I'm gonna. That's a 30 second timeout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Avi, uh, wait, Salifa says, I'm a Musa, I don't need a grab, and I like you and the podcast. There's one out there, Russ. There's, There's a Musa out there that there, doesn't dude. hate us. Ah! And they like Musa. It sounds like. I, I don't know which fact is more shocking, honestly. Right? That's actually crazy. Hold on, I'm... I'm printing this and putting it on my fridge hold on let me copy that. <laughs> put this in the value pack discord so i always have it all right comment of the day goes to uh salifas 
I like you. We like you too, Salifas. Obvious Box says, need some advice on whether I should switch to Europe server from NA. I live in Europe and my ping was about 90 to 110 on NA. Plus, I speak mostly English, so I decided to make my account there. But recently, there was a flood and my ISP had some problems with the internet cables or something in my area. So they had to basically remove them and I had to switch to some sort of Wi-Fi shit which made my internet like 10 times worse. I get 400 to 500 ping on NA. They're the only ISP in my area. I contacted them as to when the issue will be fixed, and they said at least six months. Oh, my God. This is like my worst nightmare, by the way. First of all, being flooded. Second of all, losing internet. Ah. Um, I've been playing for around three months, mostly a few hours a day, and some AFK stuff. I put 300 hours into the game. I'm level 61 in my Musa, 240, 276 Kudum, but I have a lot of value packs, camo events. I spent like 30 dollars altogether on some pets and weight so my question is whether i should switch to eu i think six months at around 450 ping is going to be very frustrating so i'm debating what to do i tested my ping on eu and it's somewhere in the 100 range also love the videos they, they help me with grinding a lot but i'm wondering if if and when you are making the next tier list video mostly hoping for a pve tier list for suck also i agree with rezar i hate how crust crusher feels and looks and i absolutely love below the belt it's so satisfying especially in pve um, my opinion, your gear score is low enough that you, now that you understand the game, you'd be able to catch back up to it with seasons relatively quickly. And that kind of ping, I mean, I don't even like 90 to 110 ping, but 400 to 500 is unplayable. I mean, yeah. That's just, I, I yeah. really, that's really, that's what it comes down to. Like, in my opinion, like if you have 400 to 500 ping, I mean, the game's literally, like, unplayable at that point. You ha you have to swap. I mean, it, it sucks ass, but there's just no way that... I, I don't see how you can play a game at 400 to 500 ping, honestly. And that that's, like, any game. Like, dude, playing at that ping... I, I don't know. Dude, I, I've been watching... Because, you know, like, all these... Like, everything's at home now. All these tournaments for different games are at home. It It's actually insane how this is like just a side rant but it's kind of interesting but it's insane how because of the ping a lot of non-korean players in starcraft are actually winning against koreans because their micro is just gets reduced so much because their pullbacks are all late so like units die too early like stuff like that it, i don't know it's kind of ping affects so much is, is my overarching point but also interesting fact a lot of non-korean players are actually winning these online tournaments because Koreans can't micro for shit with bad pain. <laughs> uh, poor guys. Uh, also, next tier list probably will be after Succession and Awakening comes out for Hashashin, and we have a, a few months to uh, like feel that out. Uh, barring anything where it's like, all right, now Hashashin is coming out, so we're gonna start overhauling the fucking PvP system. So, yeah. barring something like that happening, I'm thinking after Hashishin comes out, probably like at the new year, maybe. That's kind of what that's kind of what I, I'm thinking slash feeling personally. Yeah, you're saying new new tier list around New Year's. Yeah. Yeah, at least around probably I don't know. Uh, yeah, a, a month or two after it's out, like the Awakening and sucks out, and that shit's not coming to October, so. It's gonna right. Be a exactly. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Again, uh, unless something happens like December hits and we're like, all right, we're going to do a tier list. And then they're like, we're overhauling the PvP system. Tilter321 says, in regards to why you can't play ranked in, yet in League, I think a big part of it is because they don't start new players in Iron MMR. They start you off in Silver, so you get to ruin nine other people's ranked games until inevitably you drop down to Iron slash Bronze. I mean, what what is the point of the placement matches then? Like, how, you know, if it's just going to automatically start you in silver anyway. The other thing too is oh, no, like it's saying that, that no 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 you're misunderstanding. They they they're saying that the your MMR starts in in silver. You don't start with a silver rank, and then the placement matches. If you lose, you're going to go down from silver. Your MMR. If you win, you're going to go up from silver. That's right. what they're saying. And then you won't I mean, actually have a rank until you play ten but, game. But that I know that that's not true because your MMR it actually changes your MMR based on your win loss, even if you're not playing ranked. So there's no way it just auto starts you in silver. Like the placement matches don't refresh your MMR. Like so, for example, if I play 
if I play an unranked game with someone with high MMR, it's going to put us with high MMR people. If I lose a bunch with no one, if I'm just playing by myself and I keep losing it, it puts me versus like lower MMRs. Oh, someone's saying that it's different for ranked. You have two different MMRs, one ranked, one normal. I mean, that may or may not be true, but like even still, no, when I play it, with someone that's... But when I play with someone that is Diamond or Master, th literally we're against Diamonds and Masters in unranked games as well. And then when they don't play with me, we're not. So it, it is like they're somewhat tied together. But here's my my only thing is this. I like start me off in in bronze or or whatever. Or like I don't know. Like shouldn't the first two matches maybe be in bronze and if you just dominate then then it move you up to silver? Or something no, like that. No, because I think so there's thought process. I mean, I don't know if that's true that it starts you off in silver. I, I have no idea. But if it was true, I would assume the thought process would be that silver players are average. So, like, yeah. iron players and bronze players, no offense to anybody, uh, you, you kind of suck. Like, that's what those ranks mean. So silver is probably average, and then, like, if you get gold or plat, you're like, okay, you're pretty good at the game, you know what you're doing at least, and then once you get into, like, diamond and, and shit, yeah. it's like, all right, now you're, like, actually, like, a, a really good player. So here, here's the other thing is I can't play against people close to my level. Like, to be honest, like, my rank games are so random. Like, sometimes I'm against noobs, sometimes I'm not. Because people queue up on, like, alt accounts or with their friends or whatever in non rank games to help teach them. But I have played already 105 games, and I still cannot play ladder. That is a lot of games. Like, if I could play ladder, then I can actually be against the noobs that are close to my level. You know what I mean? Like, it would put me, eventually, like, it would put me against people my level instead of, like, me just getting shit-stomped over and over. Which, by the way, my win rate is, like, 29%, <laughs> like, total over those 105 games. It's so it's such a miserable experience for new players. I highly do not recommend League of Legends for new players, period. It's awful. Um, the only reason it's remotely fun is because I can play with friends that can carry me. So even if I do shit, it's like, you know, I can kind of have fun. Um, but like, what what is preventing you from playing ranked? Is it your level? Yeah, is you, that ha what it you is? have to be level thirty. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's already taken me, yeah, like over a hundred games, and I'm level twenty five, and it only has slowed down from here. So it's probably going to be another thirty to fifty games before I can play. You gotta play. You gotta come play with us in the value pack Discord, man. We're playing like at least once a week. We get in and play like ten fucking games, just hang out and chill. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so Bloom in chat is saying uh, he broke it down with how many experience points that in total it's about 187 games to get to level 30. That's that's is that not a lot for a new player, Res? I mean, I think most players that are new to games aren't like itching to get into the competitive scene. They're just playing New the to game games, for fun. sure, but League, like, I mean, League is like, that's all it is. I mean, I guess if they're playing Blitz, but then in Blitz it doesn't really matter, so it doesn't affect those people. But if you're playing Summoner's Rift, I don't know. I, whatever, it's... There, I, are, I guess a lot I, of people, there yeah. are a lot of people that play League that don't play ranked, like, that play Summoner's Rift. No, I agree. I, I know, for sure. But I'm not one of them, dude. I want to play some ranked. I want to get put in iron, you know, where I belong. Oh, well, grind up, grind out your games then, and get to fucking work climbing the ladder. Dude, I'm already. Over, I'm like the the problem is I'm already basically bored of league. Like I kind of don't even want to play anymore. <laughs> I I it, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. Um, let's see. Queso eighty one says, "Ha, huh, that first comment you read last week, Frosty guy being salty about the channel, sounds like a typical Musa slash Mewa. I do love that Mewas always get thrown in, also." <laughs> uh reno says the whole league talk from frosty about the guy that was being toxic towards him yep 100 percent how league is that's the other thing too it's like well you're gonna ruin nine other people's games according to 50 or 60 of my games and the team members i've had i've already done that since they're always gamer wording me so like what's the difference you know they're gamer Yikes. wording the shit out of me in some of these games if i don't have if i'm not playing with friends it's that shit's crazy. The amount of times I've been told to to play a casual game like Candyland, 
All right, Blood Diamond says, uh, or uh, sorry, Kenichi Sai says, oh damn, if it is really true that hash isn't that great in Sakura, I can foresee the mooses re-roll the hash complaining even more again. Apparently Suck Hash can get like 5.1k, according to a video that got posted recently, if you have high gear. So that's pretty good. Um, also, console sucks. It's gimped to 60 FPS, and as far as I know, you can't overclock the RAM and the processor on consoles. PC can. Console, I must admit that it works no problem out of the box, but BDO is a different beast, and I think it's a waste of time playing it on console. Um, on that note, keep it up, boys. Miss Nayashi, no homo. P.S. I hope you guys do something about the double slash multi comments who post the same shit worded differently every week. My favorite podcast is getting soiled because of all these and one of the segments i like about the value pack podcast is the comments yeah we are getting too many like repetitive comments like if you post more than one comment we're just like gonna pick one comment and only read that you got to put it all together and give us a tldr otherwise like it's just too much there you can edit your previous comment so you can add stuff to it if you have another thought just edit it and add to it don't keep posting multiple comments please um and then Blood Diamonds replies to him and says, So true that BDO is a waste of time on console. That's why I'm saving up for a PC. I'm leaving a lot behind on console, but PC is seriously where it's at. And then the Musassin instantly like breaks this rule and has three comments all separate. So let's see. <laughs> um, I mean, to be fair, the rule wasn't in place until right. just now. Going forward, after today, one comment, people. Just one comment. Edit your comment. Add to it. Um, he says, pretty sure PA could remove the pay to win, but that means they would have to tear down the current system of how things operate, i.e. enhancing getting gear, other functions that use pay to win as a boost, and trying to develop two systems of gaming and maintain content for both doesn't sound profitable for a business at this standpoint, probably why they don't make pay to win aspect compulsory, and it's a if you want, then you can. Um, the nineteen twenty, unless you want to comment on that. Um, the 1920s nope. played on PC, yes, with a controller uh, around when the Dark Knight was released. Now I'm on PS4 Pro with the SSD, really not that hard since launch beta. I was in a not too bad PvP guild pre console merge, quit PvPing over shitty connection issues. Yes, it sucks. Also, my ping is bad, so I just life skill and grind and work on T9 mats until PS5 comes out. Um, the Musassin also says Rezar is funny, maybe for Maywai Augment gives it something positive but for suck blue buff just allows us to use certain skills on cooldown again and therefore you say it's op remember that all skills have the pvp damage reduced using a skill again with a blue buff also reduces the damage for the cost of 100 stamina um does the blue buff not isn't the whole point of the blue buff is that it negates the negative effects of a cooldown like that's what it that's what the blue buff does i don't know yeah, it's no. The blue buff is really good. Pretending it's not good is just nah, it's, don't stop. Blood Diamond says Frosty. Also, I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I'm curious to back up a little bit. Someone who said PS5, waiting for PS5. Has it been confirmed that Black Desert is even going to be on the new consoles? Um. So the devs have said they're working for Black Desert on the new consoles. They have not said or confirmed that you'll be able to play. Well, I think the the new consoles have like some retroactive bullshit so you can play older games on them just in general i'm, I'm pretty sure right Maybe but I'm then crazy. my follow-up question is if you swap to the newer consoles do you still have all your shit or do you have to like start yeah, over I mean, like how does that work well it's on ps live or the xbox one service so it should should be the same i'd imagine but i i don't know i don't know if there's any promises that it'll work for sure as of right now. But I have heard them say they're working on Black Desert for it, mm. so who knows. I'm sure they'll just increase the graphics settings so that way it's just as shit on the new consoles. They'll uh they'll give you guys two more mobs per rotation. Yeah. Um uh do, 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 do. Blood Diamond says Frosty Man, man I don't know. Is I don't know your favorite phrase whenever you have trouble explaining something. I'm just curious because I've been watching you guys since episode four. Uh, I mean, every every person has their go to their go to sentence when they're thinking. It's either usually the most common one is um, you know, or you know, or like. And yeah, I use I don't know a lot I when, I, when I'm explaining saying... something, and <laughs> I'm like, you know what? How it, it happens to me when like if I'm going on a rant. 
and the amount of energy Le like my energy level is still high at the end of the ramp, but there's not actually more stuff to say. Then I stop and say, I don't know to think of more stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's that. I don't know is my go to phrase. I have a real problem with saying like, apparently, people have called me out on it on the podcast before. <laughs> apparently, it's an issue. I don't know. Yeah, I know they made a drinking game out of it. <laughs> Zombie Horde says, nah, Frosty, that's literally just League. By the way, I, I, I played Maneater this weekend. Have you seen that game, Rosar? Anteater? Maneater. You're a shark, and you go through. It's like Grand Theft Auto open world style where you're just a shark, and you're killing stuff and doing side quests and stuff. It's got about 50 hours of content in it total, and it's the most fun 50 hours you'll ever have in your entire life. Really? I've been playing the uh, Destroy All Humans remaster. Oh, how is that? So good. The is game, it? like, when you play the game as a kid, there's so much shit in there that you don't really pick up on. That you're just like, I, I guess, like, okay, whatever. And then now as an adult, you're just like, holy shit, bro. <laughs> These guys are savage. Yeah. Um... Taos Acceptan says, Emergency Escape isn't as difficult as it seems on console. Um, you never really in a, you're never really in a conflict with inputting other skills or anything if you do it at the correct speed, which isn't hard. Plus, you almost always get CC'd when you use it anyway, so there's never an issue with input conflict. <laughs> True. Uh, the Mustache says, Frosty, so you want to stay on the class you've mastered over the years and fight mooses that have, for the most part, stayed on the class religiously like myself and don't reroll and fight them when they're playing a new class, trying to learn the ins and outs so you can help clap them and tell them that grabs don't win fights. LOL, I hope you're joking about that one. Haha. -ha. Alright. <laughs> Kenichi Sai says, bro, how many times can you comment on one episode? Are you that bored or desperate for attention? Alright, so first of all, I, I will give you guys a month, and then I will clap you guys with uh, classes that I don't play. That's what I, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, Laggy <laughs> Skill says, "What costume do you guys think that Frosty bought with a fifty dollars bail money from Grandma Frosty?" <laughs> uh, that stupid fucking housewife one. No, I put a down payment on a lawyer. All right, so I can stay out of jail. Yeah, you don't remember last week? My grandma uh -oh. called. The lawyer thing. That's why my grandma said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Triple X Harambe says, "Fresh start plus day one of every content drop." That's why I play. I played on shit graphics when I was on PC. I learned how to play on PC, but when I found the game 2.5 years late, I didn't want to catch up to PC players. Played other stuff. Found out that there was going to be a console version. Decided to become a top player on on Xbox. I'm def not top one percent, but top five to ten percent right now. Uh, for sure, I'm 564, which slash Tamer, 269 AP, Nuvra on both. Sure, there's some issues on Xbox, but Xbox has always been the console I played. KB slash M is not really my jam. What's KB slash M? I don't know. Uh, I even played some PC BDO with controller, but... Out oh, keyboard slash mouse. I even played some PC BDO with controller, but outside of a few minor differences... Um, I definitely prefer Xbox. Next gen should make it extra fun. I kind of prefer the slower pace of console. And since I started in beta, I'm not in a position where I have to rush and make gains to feel like I'm catching up. I just play and go for stuff at my own pace. Currently saving to swing some Krontat Ogres or Pen Dandy. I don't know. Uh, Bell in one minute. Oh, yeah, shit. Fucking mother. I forgot, dude. I gotta get my fat payout. <laughs> my fat Bell's heart, dude. Uh, You got a party to join? I don't know yet. Let me see. I think so. I hope so. I believe so, yeah. Do -do -do -do. Come on. Yep. Yeah. In one. Now let's see if I crash switching to the actual character. I usually do. Have you been noticing, pe like, people have been complaining more and more about crashing when switching characters, or just crashes to desktop? I feel like it is kind of becoming a thing. Although, for me, it's, like, around node war time, usually. 
Uh, I haven't noticed anything, but maybe. Yeah. Okay, back to the comments. Uh, Joe Kim Bang says, love the podcast. I think you do a great job every week, and it's really nice to listen to while grinding Sherrick and Necropolis for a potion part that is just a myth. My comment about deleting comments last week was mostly a trolley joke. I think you're doing well keeping things civil. Fuck Maywa. <laughs> <laughs> in famous infamous <laughs> Z <laughs> yeah fuck me dude infamous Z says uh, I play on Xbox One X with SSD and the load times are not really that are not that bad only issues are the occasional lag freezes and desync um, Lord Cinder says out of curiosity what are those three classes that have good rebam skills um, that's a good question so at, at least from my point of view, the good rebam skills are on... Like, Kuno has good rebam skills. Ninja has good rebam skills. Sork has great rebam skills. Um, although Oni Shadow is also, like, fucking amazing. So is Illusion. Um, Tamer's rebam skills are actually... One of them is okay. Um, Resonance is incredible. That is a great skill. Um, I actually think Mystic has one really good rebound skill. Perfect Blow is actually an awesome skill. Striker also has it. Uh, Lund's Zerker. Phoenix Chase is okay. The other one's not good. Zerker? Oh, the Zerker Spin. Uh, also, one of our heals is one of our rebounds. Oh, one of the heals, yeah. Yeah, so our rebounds, the normal rebounds you'll see a Zerker take just typically, unless they're trying to, like, use the goddamn charge, which is a death sentence. You'll go uh, the the heal and then the spin for PvE. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the other classes. The ranger ones are pretty meh. The archer ones are pretty meh. Uh, wizard and witch rebams are really fucking good too. So there's actually yeah, a lot of classes. Lots of thing. Yeah, there's yeah. actually a lot of classes with good rebams. Um, the Dark Knight ones are are not very good. They have their Shadow Strike one is is good. That's the only one though. Mewa rebams are nice. I feel like every Mewa complains about their rebams. Are their rebams nice? Like actually like good. Archer rebams are probably the worst in the game. Don't at me. They are yeah. Guardian ones aren't that good either. <laughs> um, Tim says. Wait, does Frosty literally not think this game is pay to win? Yes. Uh, I mean, here, here's always been my thing. There's nothing to fucking win in this fucking game. There's nothing competitive <laughs> about this game. Uh, such Stockholm syndrome. How is that Stockholm syndrome? Admitting uh, that just... that there's no competitive PvP. How is that Stockholm syndrome? Because the you're taking a definition like absolutely literally. You're saying well, it can't be pay to win because you can't win. Well, there's nothing you can win at in this game, and all, all everything competitive right now is equalized gear. It's T ones and like Arsha tournaments. That's it. Everything else is kind of irrelevant. And siege is like you, you don't even have to pay to win to be a siege wizard. You just you just get a little bit past soft cap, which takes not that long anymore, and uh, done. Done and done. Okay. I'm, we've had this no, discussion I, I don't a million care. times. I, I, I don't, don't want to do it again. I don't care about pay to win. I'm not. I it, to me, it's it's it just doesn't affect me or any. It just doesn't affect people that much in this game. So I don't care. In other games, it has way more impact. In this game, it's like your day to day. It, it's. I feel like it's so rare that pay to win is negatively affecting your gameplay. In fact, for a lot of people, it's actually benefiting it just because of the way the market works. So people actually I mean, can get you items. say that, stuff. but Cairo had 290 AP when I had 220 in large part because he was dropping like $1,000 a week on Artisan Memories. So. Right, and he lost to everybody in PvP. He had the worst war scores. He was shit in RBF. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It like barely affects anything. He literally couldn't win against anybody in anything. Plus, he was DK, so he was squishy, no matter how much. He never had DP. He always was just killable. Um, moving on. Uh, Robbie says, Rezar's mic is way louder than Frosty's. I think it's been like that forever. 
I either don't hear what Frosty is saying or Reslar is shouting with full force. Could you please fix that? Love your content. That's just his personality. His personality is louder than mine. By a lot. Unfortunately. Uh, it definitely has not been like that forever. Um, but for the last few weeks it has been. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why. I tried to fix it a little bit more today, so eventually we'll get there. We'll see. We'll see how it turns yeah, out. Yeah, we're trying. We're we're actively trying to figure it out. We know it's a problem. Trust us. Small dick stole your girl says so. Don't get it twisted. People that bitch about awaken Musa love the class and love playing. It's just extremely underpowered. You can see that if you're not blind. That's why they're bitching about it because it's not good at all. It's pretty dog shit state at the moment, but they still love playing the class, so they bitch about it. And wait for it to get buffed. Yeah, I think the the problem is at least for me, is not not to get too deep into it, is that it, it's not in as shit of a state as they say. It's not even remotely close to as shit of a state. There's classes. There are classes that have it worse in both PvP and PvE, especially if you're counting suck, because for whatever reason, Moose's like to pretend that they're the only class that has to use Succession to be super, super efficient, when that's basically every class. Every class can't use their Awakening right now, for the most part, except for, like, Guardian. I don't know who who like what are the classes that prefer awakening right now? It's like Guardian, Witch, Zerker. maybe Zerker. That's basically it. <laughs> um Tamer is more like they just don't like the playstyle of Suck, but Suck is still more efficient, does more damage. Um yeah, so everyone else kind of suffering kind of a lot of the same issues except for like you know, unless you love playing Succession, right? So, um, yeah. Ignore the name says best way to play league starting out mute everyone that aren't your friends. LOL. Also, Moose should try Zerker Omega Lol. Yeah, Zerk needs work in ways huge HP pool melt like butter. Adam Punton says they are stalling the new zone for when Shadowlands comes out. I could see Wouldn't that. Surprise me. Um, a guest that you could bring on for the podcast, in my opinion, would be Huntler or Can't Even Sin. I don't know, Can't Even Sin. Huntler, uh, has told me he's not really interested, so. And I don't know, do you know Can't Even Sin? I do not know that. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, and that, that's it. That's it for the, uh, podcast. I did open my Bells bundle and got nothing, so that's exciting. Same. Same. Three Kaffir Stones. Congratulations. Congratulations to all the people who got three Kaffir Stones from their uh, from their Bells bundles. Hopefully you enjoyed. This spell died quickly today. Died fast as fuck. 1,400 seals. That's good. Oh, he's the GM of Vertex, apparently. Oh, is he? I didn't. I don't actually know their new GM. That's what. That's what people are saying in uh, your chat. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know him at all. I don't, I don't know, know his class or yeah. I gotta. I gotta look that up. Up. Look that up. But uh, all right. I guess that's it. Uh, anything else before we head out here? Uh, no. I believe that's it. We just need uh thank yous and stuff. <laughs> you got I know, I know. Poor Two Minds just hosted me right before uh, I'm gonna hop. Thank you so much, though, Two Minds. You, I'll let you pick who who should I host, Two Minds. I'll host the person of your choice. Just type the name in chat, and I'll host them instead, and and I'll give you credit for it. That's funny, dude. You got more viewers than Choice right now. Holy shit, you're more popular than Choice, dude. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he may have started a stream probably like five seconds ago, but still. All right, we'll do two months. All right, Res, you want to close this out? Yeah. So thanks, everybody, so much for watching slash listening. Uh, thank you again to all of our patrons over at Patreon. We appreciate you supporting us and helping keep the show running. Uh, thank you so much to... I, I don't want to fucking... It was Roastame, right? Roastame, yeah. Ro? He pronounced Rostain. it Rostain. Okay. Also, Grimmick is right next to me, dude. My hero. Yeah, we. He might. Uh, he might join. Uh, Bloodthirst. He's in Bloodthirst. Minus, 
Oh, wait, he joined? And on, on my screen, he's in Bloodthirst right next to me. Renzin, oh, Grimmick, is, and Bloodthirst. Joined. Yeah, look at that. Last I heard Mina last I heard Mina was like gonna try and message him. I didn't know he hadn't actually joined yet. Um But yeah, thank you to our patrons. Thank you to uh Roastame for hanging out with us, chatting about Kuno and making montages and, and videos and all that kind of stuff. Uh check out all of our streams, uh twitch.tv slash Nashi underscore NA, twitch.tv slash so frosty, twitch.tv slash not reslar. Roastames, I think he put it in chat, didn't he? Or am I crazy? He did. It's uh Twitch.tv slash Rostame underscore. Wait, what? I missed the podcast. Excuse me. You did miss the podcast. We're at, we're we're out showing right now. The music is playing. The, the 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 music is being turned up right now, and we're fading out into the distance, but not really because I don't fade until the last second. And we'll catch you guys later. And there's the fade. <laughs>